begins the season-long celebration. 100 years of Florida Gator football. A celebration of the Gators' past and present. And the pride and passion that is Florida Gator football. However, it may be the number two that has most Gator fans ready for this season. It's year two for Urban Meyer's spread offense. 100 years of Florida football kicks off next on Sun Sports. Ben Hill Griffin Stadium on the campus of the University of Florida. Season number 100 starts today. The Florida Gators take on the Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles. All Southeastern Conference preseason quarterback Chris Leak starting his senior campaign for the Florida Gators. And Southern Miss flies in here with one of the top tight ends in the country and sophomore Sean Nelson. And welcome once again, everybody, on Sun Sports for another season of Florida Gator football. Alongside Gator great Nat Moore, I'm David Steele. Thanks for tuning in. Florida, expectations very high, maybe higher than usual. Nat, we know how high expectations generally are around here. Well, for a good reason. Urban Meyer, in every program he's been a head coach, the second year is when the team has really taken off. And to make things even a little sweeter, he's got 20 seniors to work with. One of those seniors uh, is Chris Leak starting his 34th consecutive game. This guy has uh, accomplished a lot of things, has not won a championship, though, Nat, for the Florida Gators. That's what he wants this year. Well, he wants it in the worst way. As we look at Chris's numbers there, you know, that's last season. But his career has been the same way. He's completing 62, over 62% of his passes. He's thrown for 65 touchdowns against only 29 interceptions. And then you look at Tim Tebow, the Southpaw true freshman that will get a lot of playing time because they've got to get him ready to play. This guy has rushed and thrown for over 13,000 yards in his career. And then when you start to look at Jeremy Young, you know, he will get a chance to play the night for the Golden Eagles, but this is a guy that pretty much is inexperienced. He's only thrown the ball 53 times in his entire career, completing at a 38% clip. And then there's Stephen Reeves, the son of former All-American John Reeves. He's a Southpaw. In 2004, he played at Michigan State. I look for him to play today and to play a lot. Well, uh, a lot of interesting storylines. The Reeves story is certainly one of them. We'll take you inside the game all evening long. Some of the key elements we'll be keeping an eye on. Florida's very inexperienced offensive line. How well can it protect Chris Lee? And can the Gators run the football behind that offensive line? That'll be very important against a very aggressive Southern Miss defense today. As far as the Florida secondary is concerned, hit hard by graduation and still appears to be one of the strengths of the football team going into this year. College football from the Sunshine State. The eyes tell the story on both sides of the football. The Gators and the Golden Eagles from Southern Miss. The opening kick when we come back to Gainesville. Football on Sun Sports is brought to you in part by your Southern Chevy dealers. Visit us today and find out why Chevy is America's number one brand, number one value. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. Florida Field on the campus of the University of Florida, Ben Hill Griffin Stadium is rocking. In anticipation of the sprint onto the field by the 2006 Florida Gators, and here they come. Florida Gators, Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles, the Florida football team running through that tunnel of Gator football lettermen, including the 1996 national championship team. About 100 members of that team in attendance today for a big celebration, uh, which will continue on into halftime here tonight from Gainesville. Jeff Bauer, the veteran head coach of the Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles, he replaced Curly Holman back in 1990 and has uh, done a tremendous job ever since the winningest coach in Conference USA football history. And uh, year in and year out, 
a football team that is very dangerous. They've been to bowl games eight of the last nine years under Jeff Bauer. And Urban Meyer, in his second year as head coach of the Florida Gators, his third head coaching stint at Bowling Green and at Utah, his teams were much improved in season number two. And uh, that is one of the reasons why Gator fans are so excited about this particular season because history would tell you that Florida would be a much improved football team even uh, above and beyond their 9-3 and three season last year and big victory against Iowa in the Outback Bowl. There's a look at young Stephen Reeves, the backup quarterback for Southern Mississippi. Gator fans familiar with uh, his father, John Reeves, one of the all-time great quarterbacks in Florida football history. Had a long NFL career. And Stephen, out of Tampa, went to Michigan State was there for a couple of seasons, transferred, almost transferred to Florida, was thinking about that, wound up at Southern Mississippi. And he will not start tonight, however, for the Golden Eagles. Jeremy Young will. And, of course, Chris Leak, the signal caller for the Gators, the senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, has a chance to rewrite some very important passing records this year for the Florida Gators. There's a look at the starting quarterback for Southern Mississippi. That's Jeremy Young. And Young, a very inexperienced uh, junior out of Jackson, Mississippi, actually played more two years ago than last year in his sophomore campaign. He replaces a very efficient Dustin Ullman, who by and large was a four-year starter at quarterback for Southern Miss. So they're operating with an inexperienced quarterback, but yet a very talented football team, Southern Mississippi, and no stranger to big ball games. They've played uh, a number of uh, big programs. In fact, in their franchise their school history Nat they've scored 13 victories against un, uh, rather ranked football teams yeah they had Alabama on the ropes last year in the opener uh, they were up 21 10 and Alabama came back to win yeah that was a tough game in Tuscaloosa great coverage on the opening kick as Jamal Cornelius who was advised to keep the ball in the end zone elected to bring it out and uh, Florida will have very poor field position at their eight yard line as a result Cornelius McGee made the tackle for Southern Mississippi as Leak stands in the huddle, the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Threw 20 touchdown passes a season ago and only six interceptions. Out of the shotgun on first down. Southern Miss in a four-man defensive front. And Leak tossing it to the Sean Wynn. Wynn coming out of the backfield, picks up. Good yardage after the 16-yard line. An eight-yard pickup on first and 10. And there you see the numbers on Leak from a year ago. Over 2,600 yards, 63% completions. And only six interceptions to go with those 20 touchdowns. That's the key number there, David. That, that's six interceptions. Taking care of the football, managing the game. This time the pass out into the left flat. And it looks like it'll be enough for a first down out to the 29-yard line, or rather the 19-yard line, a three-yard pickup. Let's check out Florida's offense. Brought to you by Checkers, official burger of the Florida Gators. Trout line, better on the tackles. Not a lot of experience in that offensive line. Rissler, the only returner with a lot of experience. Andre Caldwell back in at receiver after a long offseason of rehabbing the broken leg suffered last year in the game against Tennessee. And Leak's pass is overthrown and picked off by Summerall. It's Brandon Summerall with the interception, the pass intended for freshman Percy Harvin, and the ball was simply overthrown. That's one that Chris would like to get back. Last, last year in this uh, opening game, he threw 17 straight connections before he missed one. Uh, well, I tell you what, it, it might look like it was overthrown, David, but going back looking at it, it looked like Percy gave up on the route. You know, you're, as a quarterback, you're throwing the ball to a spot and you expect that young guy to get there. There we saw the inexperience of the freshman receiver. So the Gators turned the ball over on their first possession. Jeremy Young under center at the Florida 28. Play action fake and the pass to the tight end, Nelson. He's got it and steps out of bounds at the Florida 7-yard line. Boy, you can see already why the Golden Eagles are so excited about this sophomore, Sean Nelson, 6'5", 235. And there's Jeremy Young, only played in four games last year. He got a lot more experience two years ago, had a couple of starts. 
And the Golden Eagles threaten to score after the Florida interception. Running back to Larry Thomas. Weekly the fullback. And Young is going to keep the football and is tripped up at the six-yard line. Tony Joyner on the stop for the Gator defense. And let's take a look at the Golden Eagles, brought to you by Checkers, official burger of the Florida Gators. Experienced offensive line. McKee on the tackle spot, the only new starter there. And Sean Nelson, we've already seen what he can do. Very talented tight end, a sophomore, one of the top tight ends in the country. Southern Mississippi, a chance to take an early lead in Gainesville. Jeremy Young with good protection. Touchdown, Golden Eagles. Damian Carter with the catch as Young has good protection and calmly floats that ball into the end zone. And David, this is nothing but a design play. The old underthrow, what Carter does is he drives the defender into the Back of the end zone, and then the ball is thrown behind him, and he comes back. It's a timing route, uh, perfect execution by the Golden Eagles. Oh, well, Southern Mississippi is on the scoreboard first. Darren McCaleb, exceptional place kicker for the Golden Eagles. The left footer drills it between the uprights, and Southern Mississippi out to a 7-0 lead, taking advantage of a Florida turnover in the early going. Well, the Golden Eagles have taken an early lead after the Chris Lee interception. Jeremy Young with a touchdown toss. And let's get another look. And this is just great pass protection. It's a veteran offensive line. Nice job by Carter of driving Smith into the end zone and then coming back to catch the ball. Now, the Golden Eagles, they are... Not a team that will come in here on opening day in Gainesville and be afraid of uh, the number seven ranked Florida Gators. As we mentioned earlier, they've played a lot of top ranked football teams through the years. They've won some games through the years. They gave Alabama all they could handle. And Florida fans know how good Alabama was last year. They lost in Tuscaloosa 30 to 21 early in the season. This time Cornelius is going to take the advice of Keystone Moore and down the football in the in the end zone. So the Gators will bring it out to the 20 this time and have a little better field position. And David, sometimes what happens is, you know, you come into a ball game like this, there's so much hype, you get so juiced up that you just make too many mistakes. You got to calm down and let the game take care of itself. You try, you come out, you're trying to make things happen, you know, the way Cornelius did on that opening uh, kickoff, and you set your team up in a bad situation, and then you get a rookie that you're uh, depending on and you know he stops his route you know he's got to get in there and get in there sharp otherwise Chris Leak won't be going to him much more during the ball game well Harmon is not on the field as the Gators start their second series Deshaun Wynn is however and Wynn shaking his way across the 40 to the 43 yard line 23 yards on the carry great blocking by the Gators to free up Deshaun Wynn outstanding blocking by the left side of your offensive line nice job by Deshaun Wynn of reading the block. See how he cut back and then he picks up the block. And Jamal Cornelius, outstanding running by Deshaun Wynn. Deshaun Wynn, one of 13 redshirt seniors on this Florida team. Leak has good protection. Andre Caldwell with the catch for a gain of about 10 yards. Here's the Golden Eagle defense. Sean Merrill, a junior college transfer. Prince and Chatelaine on the ends. Merrill, a very talented youngster up front for Southern Mississippi. The linebackers led by middle linebacker Gerald McGrath. Number 24, a big-time playmaker. Keystone Moore gets the handoff. And Moore is stopped behind the line of scrimmage by the linebacker McGrath the, the man we talked about McGrath number 24 had a huge game against Alabama early last season and then suffered an injury and uh, missed most of the rest of the year keys to the game brought to you by Chevrolet 
And, and what the Golden Eagles want to do, they want to be able to run the football, and then secondary-wise must play well defensively. But for the Gators, this offensive line must protect Chris Lee, give him time to throw the football, and then the defensive line needs to get pressure on the quarterback, needs to dominate the offensive line. Barnett trying to muscle its way for the first down, and they are successful across the 45 to the 44-yard line in Southern Mississippi Territory. Well, David, here is this offensive line. It's an inexperienced, but a nice job getting movement along the way. Drew Miller pulling up in the hole. He comes from his right guard position, pulls up, leads through. Outstanding movement by that offensive line. Golden Eagles have a very aggressive defense. They are going to blitz a lot tonight, and the Gators feel like they must run the football effectively to negate that aggressive swarming defense of the Golden Eagles. Leak on the play action. Breaks free from pressure and throws the ball away. And there you see that aggressive defense by Southern Miss. Brandon Summerall, the safety who had the interception, putting the pressure on Chris Lee. Also, you got good pressure from Shadowlink. Matthew Shadowlink coming in. Nice job by Leak of avoiding the tackle and then heads up, throwing the ball away. You know, we saw a lot of that last year out of Chris David, where Basically, he managed the game, got rid of the football, didn't give up the sack, didn't try and force it anywhere. So that brings up a second and 10 for the Gators at the Golden Eagle 44. Keystone Moore. Ridden down by linebacker James Denley, number 22. Gain of only a yard on that play. So now the Gators are going to be in a third down and long situation, an obvious passing down. Southern Miss won't be surprised to, to see them bring a lot of folks in this situation. Yeah, I, I expect to see seven, eight men around the line of scrimmage. You know, they've been walking up there, you know, more and more each snap. So, you know, don't be surprised if they come after Chris to try and force him into turning the ball over. You no know, backs in the backfield with Leak. Three men wide to the right, two men wide to the left. Cornelius in motion. Leak doesn't like something, and he calls timeout. But Florida using its first timeout of the night, stopping the clock with 9.25 to play in the first quarter, trailing Southern Mississippi 7 to nothing. Urban Meyer in his second year at the helm of the Florida Gators. Jeff Bauer, the veteran coach in his 16th season at Southern Miss. Southern Miss on top early 7 to nothing. Let's check in with our sideline reporter Steve Babbick. Well last season the Gators had running back by committee. Deshaun Wynn got the most carries followed by Marcus Manson and Keystone Moore and last year no Gators started more than three games in a row at the running back position. The last two games of the year Florida State and Iowa were started by Keystone Moore. During the fall practice no doubt 1A and 1B for Moore and Wynn. They're trying to establish one guy to be the guy in the backfield. Wind uh, has already broken off a nice 23 yard run tonight. But right now, the Gators need nine yards to keep this drive going at the 44 yard line of the Golden Eagles. Leak getting some pressure, throwing it intended for Caldwell, and it is incomplete. Good coverage by Jasper Falk. And uh, indeed, Southern Mississippi came with a lot of pressure. Well, they came with pressure. Nice job by the O line and the backs. Picking up the blitz. Chris League has all day to throw the football, but an outstanding job by Jasper Falk of just getting in the way of Andre Caldwell to keep him from being able to get downfield. Senior Eric Wilbur back to punt. Falk standing at the 10 yard line, waving for and making the fair catch at the nine. So an effective punt by Eric Wilbur. No return by Falk and a 34-yard punt by the Florida senior. Florida's defense put in a tough situation. First time they are on the field after the interception thrown by Chris Lee. Southern Mississippi able to put the ball into the end zone. And this, this junior quarterback who does not have a lot of experience was very calm, very cool. He, his father, a, a high school football coach for him, and he knows the game. It's all about opportunity. You know, he's getting his opportunity to play. Previous years, he just wasn't able to get on the field. Backed up this time, however. The swing pass is caught by 
Thomas and the Gators swarm him under flags flying everywhere. McDonald got there first. Larry Thomas on the receiving end, but someone got a piece of his face mask. So this one is going against Florida's defense. Referee Hubert Owens with the signal. And the question is, is it uh, of the five yard or the 15 yard variety? Face mask. Number 98 of the defense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Well, it's uh, the five yard variety, but still you take away the sack or the tackle behind the line of scrimmage at about the three. There it was, Brandon Seiler. There or was it, it Ray McDonald? It's actually Ray McDonald there that, uh, well, he's just holding on for dear life. It felt like he was the last guy to make, have an opportunity to make the tackle. In the defense, standing tall on first and five. The tackle made by Spikes, the freshman linebacker. Florida's defensive line anchored by McDonald and Moss on the ends. Marcus Thomas actually not in the lineup here today. They're the linebackers. Siler and Everett, all Southeastern Conference caliber. And Brian Crum, much improved this year. And the secondary uh, hit hard by injuries, and yet those guys have really stepped up. Reggie Nelson looking for a big year. Reggie Lewis on a corner. Young Ryan Smith on the other corner. Played very well in the preseason. And Tony Joyner, the strong safety. Another miss trying to grind it out for the first down. Seiler stepping up to make the tackle for the Florida Gators. And it appears that the Golden Eagles are a little bit short of the first down. That was Cody, or rather uh, Damian Fletcher on the carry. And it'll be third down and less than a yard for Southern Mississippi. Well, Southern Miss comes in with three running backs, Cody Hall, Larry Thomas, and Damian Fletcher. And we expect to see all three on play here, don't we, David? That's right. Fletcher, a true freshman out of Biloxi. And the give is to the fullback, Weekly, and Weekly battering up near the 20. It appears to have a Golden Eagle first down as Brandon Steiner plugged the gap. But it will be a Southern Mississippi first down. So the, the penalty on first down, that very costly. Extremely costly. There you see Weekly doesn't get to carry the ball much, only carried the ball 12 times all of last year, but he averages four points, four yards per carry. So, you know, third and short, good guy to put the ball in his hands at that 245 pounder. Weekly, big senior. Out of Brandon, Mississippi, first down. Young's pass is caught by P. Ryan. And Pirine is hit by Reggie Nelson after a gain of only three. Well, tonight, don't miss this season's first Geico Gator post game on Sun Sports at 9.30. After the Southern Miss game, Sun Sports picks up where the network leaves off by giving viewers exclusive extended post game coverage hosted by Whit Watson and Brady Ackerman. Urban Meyer's team falling behind early. A costly turnover, a costly penalty and Southern Mississippi has moved the ball from uh, their nine yard line out to their own 24. Well, this is a scrappy football team that they get after you. you know, when you talk about the Alabama game last year they were actually leading the ball game if you remember David where they they got out front 21 to 10 and Alabama was very fortunate to be able to come back to win that ball game. They won the New Orleans Bowl last year, their eighth bowl appearance in nine years. And finished with seven victories on the season. Pressure, but the pass is thrown beautifully, and a first down for Southern Miss. Jeremy Young is extremely impressive. He see the blitz coming all the way. He actually takes his time, gives his receiver a chance to clear, and then he's able to get the ball to him. I mean, this takes a lot of time to run this route before Jordan can get up there and make the tackle. Nice route by Josh Barnes. Just cool and calm. Takes the hit, delivers the football. Doesn't look like an inexperienced quarterback as of yet. No, he's very poised out there, and this Golden Eagle offense is moving the football. They're at their own 33. Young rolling. 
Throwing on the move, and the pass is incomplete, but a flag is thrown. Reggie Lewis covering. Well, Lewis appeared to have uh, tight coverage on freshman Rodney Gray, but the penalty flags come flying in there. And uh, you'd think it's going to go against the Gators. It'll be another costly penalty. Let's go. Here they are, right here. And right there, it looked like what they pr probably called was he reached out and grabbed it with the left hand. Ten yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Now Reggie Lewis, the converted uh, wide receiver, finished the year playing some outstanding defensive back. Remember the, the big pick he had against Vanderbilt. Well, got a chance to play last year because of the injury to Vernell Brown. A former wide receiver that uh, got an opportunity to play and started the last two ball games for the Gators. Played well against Iowa, and the outback bowl is where? Well, there you look at wow. the numbers of Jeremy Young. He's five for five and a touchdown. Came into the ball game and never thrown a touchdown, did Very poised. The junior out of Jackson. And the Gators unable to put much pressure on him again, but no one is open. He throws it upfield. The pass is caught, and another first down for Southern Mississippi. So the Golden Eagles moving the football. Damian Fletcher coming out of the backfield with the catch. Here's another look at it. Plenty of time to throw the football, and then he just finds time, glides out to the open, and then gets the ball to Fletcher. Golden Eagles on the march again. They started this drive at their nine yard line. Somebody's shoe came off and another flag is dropped as Fletcher carries the ball back near the line of scrimmage. Brandon Seiler on the tackle for the Gators. But there is a flag down. David, it just looked like this uh, Gator team is Overhyped, you know, they're making all kinds of mistakes right now. They've underestimated this football team you know, Sometimes you you get so pumped up on the opening of the season that you forget to, to read your keys Holding. Number 75 on the offense 10 yards from the previous spot repeat first down That's left tackle Chris Clark the fourth year junior out of uh, New Orleans called for the hold so the first uh, Really the first mistake by Southern Mississippi this evening. 5-12 left in the first quarter. And this is an opportunity for the Gators to take advantage of a mistake on their part. So far, Southern Miss has taken advantage of every mistake the Gators have made. It's first and 20. Young hit. Throws the ball into the ground. Jarvis Moss put on the pressure. Panther was outside of the frame of the tackle. Outside the tackles was the call. That was close. That's, oh, that's very close. No Let's take another look at it. Good call by the official. He does get outside, but a nice job by Jarvis of staying at home. Here's another look at it. Here's the tackle. I see he gets outside. Nice. He gets outside and then he gets rid of the football. So heads up play by Jeremy Young. Moss, the terrific pass rusher. Second down and 20. And it's Fletcher again picking up three yards to the 44 yard line of the Gators. And David, when you start to look at the time that Young is having to throw the football. A lot of that stems from no pressure up the middle. You know, with Marcus Thomas not playing today, him being out, you know, he's the guy that normally would create that pressure and force him to the outside defensive ends. Yeah, no official word on uh, the reason for Marcus Thomas not playing. We are told that Urban Meyer will address that after the game. Marcus Thomas, a preseason all conference tackle. Playing today in this season opener. Jeremy Young will call timeout. 
Raiders had him confused that time. And so the Golden Eagles Southern will stop the clock with 3.58 left the in the first, first period. Out. And Southern Mississippi leading the Florida Gators 7 to nothing. College football on Sun Sports is brought to you in part by SunTrust. Enter to win the big game tailgate and tickets for 20 at any SunTrust branch. And by KG Superstores. For men, for less. A capacity crowd in Gainesville, Florida. Southern Miss. Poor start for the Gators, Steve Babbick. We'll get down to Steve momentarily. The Gators trying to stop Southern Miss on third down and 18. And after the timeout, Jeremy Young standing in the pocket, throwing down the right sideline. It is taken away. No, yeah, picked off by the Gators. Tony Joyner with a terrific catch. Really not a bad play by Southern Mississippi because uh, it was third and long, so they throw the ball deep net, and even with an interception, the Gator field position is not all that good. Well, it's it's as good as a punt, but a nice job by Tony Joyner coming over from his strong safety position, playing the football at his highest point, getting the interception on a pass that was intended for number 87, Chris Johnson. Well, Florida still trailing seven to nothing late in the first quarter with the ball for the third time tonight. And on the end of uh, toss, it is Percy Harvin, the explosive freshman, brought down by Jasper Falk. But this Harvin, a, an exciting player out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, number one wide receiver prospect in the country. Now he's got a good lead block there with number 21, Deshaun Wen. Nice job of cutting it up. You know, this guy was a tremendous runner as well as a pass receiver in high school, David. So, you know, here's a guy that you really want to get the ball in his hands and give him a chance to, to make something happen. He's a playmaker. And uh, the Gators feel like uh, they've got quite a handful of uh, true freshmen that are going to play a major role in this campaign. Leak on the fake to win. Looking for Caldwell. Now throwing it to Dallas. Baker. Baker sidesteps one defender. Roars into Golden Eagle territory. They're going to say that he stepped out of bounds. Back up field at the 47-yard line. But it is a 29-yard Gator pickup. But an outstanding play by Chris Leak. We we started the ball game talking about Chris Leak. Now watch him get outside, and then once he gets out there, sets his feet, gets the ball to Dallas Baker, who's your leading receiver coming into this year with 52 receptions last year. Good job of trying to walk the, the tightrope on the sideline by Dallas Baker. Well, the ball is spotted at the 47. Gators with uh, a nice reverse run by Harvin and then the beautifully thrown pass from Leak to Dallas Baker. The officials having a discussion. Let's listen. 25 second clock is not operating properly. We will keep the 25 second count on the field. So we got a clock problem here in the stadium and the play clock will be kept by the officials on the field. Florida throwing uh, the interception on their their first possession setting up the Southern Mississippi touchdown they had Florida trailing seven to nothing Deshaun Wynn good blocking to the right side the ball pops out of there but it appears that Wynn got it back it'll be second down for the Gators and win and the Gators fortunate not to turn the ball over here. Well, David, he takes him on with with the ball in his right arm and he takes him on with the right shoulder and that snaps it out. Good presence to realize that the ball is out. Now watch, he takes it on with the arm that has the football in there. You cannot do that unless you put both arms over the football. Good job by Brandon Summerall. The strong safety to pop his helmet in there on the football. But a gain of five for win. Cornelius Ingram is the man in motion, the former quarterback. And Leak's throwing to Ingram. He takes off down the sideline and steps out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Ingram, the converted quarterback, a backup quarterback, couldn't sniff the field as a, as a quarterback, so they moved him to receiver slash tight end. 
And the Gator coaches feel like he has a tremendous future at that position. Well, he's just a tremendous athlete, catches the ball well. There he just loses his footing. Otherwise, you would have to say that LeVance Richmond, brother, you got to look me up. This time he loses his footing, but good job of catching the football, and he runs outstanding routes. Well, it's only the third game that Ingram has played in in his Gator career. He's a third-year sophomore. He played quarterback against Louisiana Tech last year, tight end against Iowa in the Outback Bowl, and that's it. Here is Keystone Moore. And the Gators now gaining yards in large chunks. Ladarius Webb with the tackle, a 14-yard gain by the sophomore from Arlington, Texas. Well, the Gators do something quite interesting here where they bring Caldwell in motion, and that pulls everybody out. Now you got a soft corner for him to cut up. Nice job of cutting up in there and then cutting it back. Good play design by the Gators. You move your, you move your slot guy. That takes away the defender on that side, and there's a soft corner to run to. Cornelius and Caldwell are flanked wide to the left. Leak throwing, here comes pressure from the outside, and down goes Chris Leak at the 22-yard line. At Summerall, the blitzing strong safety has already had a major impact on this game. With an interception, he forced the Deshaun Wynn fumble, even though the Gators got that one back, and now the sack of Chris Leak. And this is where Summerall comes outside and then jucked back inside of Jim Tark. Jim Tark's responsible for him, so he's got to keep leverage. You know, you want to be able to push him past the pocket instead of overrunning him, and that allowed Brandon Summerall to come in and make the tackle. Summerall, a sophomore All-American last year, as the Gators swing it to Moore. Moore turns it back to the inside, and all he sees there are white shirts, about five of them, led by number 24, Gerald McGrath. And, and David, that shows you the speed of McGrath. When they first set up this play, this little, little quick uh, flare out into the flat, you look like you've got a home run. you got blockers out front, but McGrath had so much speed that he was able to get out there and make sure that he wasn't able to turn it up. Now, McGrath had an interception for a touchdown against Alabama last year. He caused a fumble, he recovered a fumble, he had five tackles in that game against Alabama, then he broke his leg and missed the rest of the season. Well, the sophomore, a quality linebacker out of Powder Springs, Georgia. Now it's third and 13. Leak, protection breaking down, and Leak throwing for a wide open receiver, Dallas Baker, touchdown Florida. David, a year ago, the complaint about Chris Leak was he wasn't mobile, he couldn't run. Today, he's shown us a couple times where he's moved around, bought additional time, and then got the ball down to Dallas Baker for big plays. One, to keep this drive alive, and then there for the touchdown. Nice job by Chris Leak. Baker with the touchdown reception. Leak with a touchdown pass, the 66th of his brilliant Florida Gator career. And Urban Meyer's Gators have tied the score on the final play of the first period from Gainesville. Back at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium on the campus of the University of Florida. One quarter in the books. Season number 100 for the Florida Gators. And Florida has just tied the score on a 21-yard scoring toss from Chris Leak to Dallas Baker. Good blocking up front, but Chris sees that there's too much pressure. He's breaking down. He's got to get out of there. Nice job of just throwing the ball to a spot. Dallas Baker giving him a target to throw to. Good execution by both Baker and Leak. Well, Leak was perfect on that scoring drive, four for four, including his 66th Gator touchdown pass. Dallas Baker with his 12th career touchdown catch for the Gators. And Florida ready to kick off. Ladarius Webb standing deep, brings it out from the five-yard line. Oh, man, did he get clobbered. Dustin Doe, the freshman, playing that special team like he owns it for the Gators. There's a flag on the play. We'll have to check it out, but what a hit. 
by young uh, Dustin Doe out of Jasper Live Oak Suwannee High School. Well, David, I have to say, early I was talking about too much height. Well, he was feeling it, and he did it the right way. Turn. Holding. Number 17 on the receiving team. Half the distance from the end of the run. First down. Well, let's get another look at this. And watch young number 32, Dustin Doe. Well, Man. it's okay to be jacked up if you're going to deliver the blow, as you see right there with Dustin. Told you about these uh, freshmen. We've already seen Percy Harvin. Now Dustin Doe making his presence felt. Brandon Spikes, another terrific young freshman linebacker. And the penalty against Southern Mississippi has them backed up inside their 10-yard line. Running backs in the eye for Jeremy Young. Handoff to Fletcher, and Fletcher is dropped at the 12-yard line. A gain of three yards on the play. Brian Crum, the redshirt senior, the fifth-year man out of Woodbine, Georgia, on the stop. Entered to win the SunTrust Big Game tailgate and tickets for 20 sweepstakes. You could get 20 tickets for the Florida-Florida State game, including passes to our VIP tailgate party. Just visit any SunTrust branch in Florida before October 31st and register. Second down and seven for the Golden Eagles. Freshman Damian Fletcher getting most of the snaps at tailback for Southern Miss. Pressure on Young. He throws it up for grabs, and Reggie Nelson comes oh so close to picking it off. Tremendous pressure. Number 91, Derek Harvey, was in there. And, and watch and Reggie Lewis off the corner. Right, Reggie Lewis gets there and makes the play. 25 second the clock. Only now reason, the only reason that this is not an interception, David, is because Reggie Nelson is going to cover the, the deep, the uh, wide receiver, right. and then it's hard for him to turn and plan and come back. Reggie Lewis appears to be a little bit shaken up. Third down for the Golden Eagles. Gators come with a blitz. Young is drilled as he throws the ball, and it's broken up beautifully by Reggie Lewis once again. Intended for the freshman wide receiver, Rodney Gray. But Gray is no match for senior Reggie Lewis. Two back-to-back -back plays by Reggie Lewis. First with the pressure on Young on second down, and then going one-on-one -on -one with Gray, and then making the play. Good pressure by the Gator defense. Brandon Salah coming right up the middle. Gets a little hit on there. Nice job of breaking on the football by Reggie Lewis. Britt Barefoot is the punter for Southern Mississippi. From his end zone. Gets it away. Low end over end. Nelson on two hops. At the 50. Reggie Nelson fighting his way to the 47. And terrific field position for the Gators. What an outstanding job, David, of handling that kick as it was bouncing along. Got the right hop, went ahead, got the football. Good field position. 45-yard punt, 8-yard return. Florida in good field position in a 7-7 tie. Ball on Sun Sports is brought to you in part by Shams. UF and Shams, the science of hope. And by Red Baron Frozen Pizza the official pizza sponsor of the Florida Gators. Uh, Chris Leak uh, just uh, on the Gators' last possession, driving the ball club into the end zone with a touchdown strike to Dallas Baker. And there's Kim Tebow, the true freshman out of St. Augustine Nice High School who has yet to take a snap in this game. And we talked with offensive coordinator Dan Mullen and Mullen uh, told us that he would like to get Tebow in early, perhaps even the first quarter. That did not happen. And uh, Southern Miss getting out to that 7-0 lead probably had a lot to do with that. Leak is drilled as he throws the ball, and it's incomplete on first down. And there just seemed to be like there was a lot of confusion on that play as Chris Leak was looking to get the ball to Jamal uh, Cornelius. He gets pressure early on, you know, and that's that man again, Brandon Sumrall. You know, he's all over the field. Came uh, unblocked. 
Great shot on the quarterback. Second time that he's uh, been able to get a good, clean hit on Chris Lee. Where you see Chris's number, 7 of 11. Only negative, the one interception. And he uh, completed four out of four on Florida's touchdown drive. Leak will keep the ball, trying to turn uh, the corner to the outside. But this Southern Miss team has a lot of speed, and LeVance Richmond, a junior college transfer out of Pearl River Community College, able to make the stop. Gator football celebrating 100 years this fall. Share in the excitement and vote for the Gator fans all century team at the Gatorade display and participating Publix supermarket stores. That'll be a fun exercise for Gator fans, so make sure you check that out at all Publix. All century team. Boy, that, that's a tough, tough one to, to narrow that down, isn't it? There's Nat? been so many great football players that come to the University of Florida, especially when you look at this is the 100th season of Gator football. I got to get out there and vote for uh, for my partner here. Matt Moore's got to get some votes for hey, the All-Century hey, team, hey. doesn't he? I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. I think the Gators are going to get with hit get, get hit with the uh, a delay of game penalty at the 25-second clock. Delay of game. Number 12 on the offense. Five yards, yeah. still third down. You know, I always wondered, how come the quarterback always get hit with that penalty? Okay. <laughs> what about the coach that was late getting the play in, you know, sometimes? Or the center who didn't snap the didn't ball. Didn't snap the time. ball, yeah, you know. It's got to be a challenge, though, when the, when you don't have the visual of the clock that's it's been malfunctioning. Now it appears to be working, that 25-second clock. But not in time for Leak to avoid that penalty. Third down and long. Southern Miss claiming a Gator lineman jumped. One official was saying, I didn't see anything. But uh, we'll see what they come up with. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 67 on the offense. Five yards, still third down. Called it on Drew Miller. Five-yard penalty backs the Gators up to their own 41. They're going the wrong way. And, and David, that's what happens when you play a team like uh, Southern Miss that is very aggressive. Everybody's jumping around and... You know, they're, they're showing blitz and they're moving all over the place. As an offensive lineman, you're trying to figure out who you block and you move on their movement and you get called for illegal motion. Shovel it inside to Percy Harvin. He made one man miss and down he goes at the 46 yard line. The freshman brought down by Brandon Summerall. We've already seen the explosiveness, the exciting play of uh, Percy Harvin out of Virginia Beach. Little safe play, little shovel pass that, uh, you know, if he doesn't catch it, he hits the ground, and uh, it's just an incomplete pass. Good safe call. It looked like after the first play where they tried to throw it to him down the field and he stopped on the route, now they've come up with ways to try and just get the ball in his hands. Well, you got to put it in the hands of the playmakers, and Harvin is certainly that, as Wilbur... Off and cornered that baby out of bounds at the eight yard line. Beautifully done by Eric Wilbur, the senior out of Winter Park, Florida. Gators, Golden Eagles, all notched up at seven. No matter what decade you come from or what uh, level you, you go into in life, uh, when you come back to Florida Field, you're coming back to that tradition and that history, and you have embraced it. That was a little clip, uh, Emmett Smith, from the 100-year anniversary DVD. You can get one of uh, these DVDs, and the word of mouth on this is tremendous. We hear it's just great. You can get it at GatorsDVD.com or log on to GatorsZone.com. I don't have any contacts in the athletic department to get a copy, but... <laughs> I can't wait to see that. There's a flag thrown, and Sean Nelson dropped the ball at the 20-yard line. The All-American tight end unable to hold on. You know, we have not heard much from Nelson since he made a big play early. Well, N Nelson was wide open as we wait for the call and uh, just flat dropped that football. Derek Harvey getting pressure. I think they're going to... 
Call it against uh, the right tackle, Ryan McKee. It was one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, Derek Harvey and reached out and grabbed him. Well, four starters are back for Southern Miss on the offensive line. McKee, the only non-starter. 66 on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. You're right. They pulled it on McKee. Southern Mississippi's right guard, George Batiste. First team all-conference. There's McKee. And they've got a lot of experience on their offensive line. In fact, they've got 86 combined starts up there, so they've been playing together for a long time. That hold against McKee, however, and the Golden Eagles are backed up to their four-yard line. Crowd roaring as the ball is handed off, and Brandon Seiler comes up quickly to make the stop near the line of scrimmage. The middle line, linebacker doing his job, plugging the gas right up the middle. Well, Brandon Seiler is going to get the tackle, but let's give some credit to Joe Cohen, Clint McMillan, those guys that's up in the middle that's just destroying everything and allowing the middle linebacker, Seiler, to swoop in and make the tackle. What about the confidence that offensive coordinator Jay Johnson of Southern Miss is showing in a true freshman? Damian Fletcher, they've got a couple of juniors, Thomas and Hall, that carried the ball for over 500 yards apiece last year and you've got Fletcher on the field now he's checked out for the moment on second down and 13 well, and this is Thomas Thomas is able to fare no better Gators hit him Ryan Smith the transfer from Utah played with Urban Meyer there on the stop well, don't miss tailgate overtime presented by Bell South featuring a panel of experts including former UF wide receiver Chris Doring former FSU fullback William Floyd former UM quarterback Steve Walsh they'll all join with Watson preview and review the big college football games involving your favorite Florida teams Monday night at six only on Sun Sports third down and 11. Siler showing blitz. Here he comes. Also, Harvey up the middle, and the pass is incomplete. The pressure coming from Brandon Siler and Derek Harvey, and Jeremy Young had no chance to complete that third down pass. And it's, it's going to come right at you in the center. You, they're coming right in here. Good pressure. Now, what? There you go. You see Derek Harvey, and it's nothing but a tackle in game where the tackles go up, get upfield and go out. Both ends loop inside and Derek Harvey comes free. You're starting to see the Gators play the way you expected them to play. They've settled down, read their keys, and relax and play football. High snap, barefoot fields it, and kicks a beauty. Reggie Nelson backpedaling, catching it at the 41-yard line. Here comes Nelson up the middle, all the way back to the Southern Mississippi 35. David, I like this kid. You know, you, you, we, we've been looking at receive, uh, punt returners. I keep wanting to say receivers, but punt returners that have caught the ball and they work so hard to get to the wall. This time he makes a move, turns it up, and then just tries to split them. That's how you run them back for touchdowns. Florida Gators ranked number seven in a 7 7 time with Southern Mississippi on opening day, the season number 100 in Gator football history. Friday at 7 on Sun Sports. Rec Warehouse College kickoff gets a jump start on the weekend of college football. Join Whit Watson along with Brady Ackerman. We'll break down UCF's visit to the swamp. Also, find out how you could win the ultimate game room. Rec Warehouse College kickoff Friday night at 7, only on Sun Sports. We caught the show last night. Great job by Whit, Terry Norvell, and Ed Brady. Gators with good field position. As Deshaun Wynn is the ball carrier, and he is hit by Martavius Prince out of Fort P Pierce uh, Westwood High School, big number 97, one of several Floridians on this Southern Mississippi football team. Redshirt Jr. that's uh, got some size in there, 286 pounds, and you know, one of those guys that loves to get across the line of scrimmage. You, you're starting to see this Southern Miss football team where more and more guys are creeping up around the line of scrimmage. There's nobody now, now lining up five yards deep. They're all up there one, two yards from the line of scrimmage. We've got seven men within three yards of the football right now as Leak takes the snap. Pressure from the outside. The pass is thrown in time perfectly to Dallas Baker. 
that time uh, the defensive back Caleb Hendricks did not want to get beat deep and uh, Dallas Baker with an easy reception. Well, David, you said it perfect. I think these two guys have worked together before because this ball is thrown way before Dallas Baker breaks. Nice job of taking a little bit off it. Here's a good job. He's working against Hendricks. He just gets home, catches the football. Nice job by Chris of just lobbing it out there. You got one-on-one. -on -one. You got your star receiver. Who you want to go to? Dallas Baker. Big Dallas, 6'3", 206. One of 13 fifth-year seniors on this Florida team. Third down and less than a yard. On the option and the end around. Big yardage. Percy Harvin inside the 10 all the way to the Southern Mississippi five-yard line. There was so much hype about Percy Harvin's coming to the university and here is Harvin's over and here. And they're going to run a reverse. Everything looked like it's going the other way. Nice job of stepping up field. Now, if we can get Trotwine to go, get him to go and pick up a guy down the field. Don't let him come to you. Go to them. All of a sudden, it becomes a short corner, and Harvin's is in the end zone. Deshaun Wynn barrels over the five to the three. Looks like the big fella had trouble getting his feet going there. <laughs> Harvin just ran blue past well, him. Well, he waited for everybody to come to him instead of going to them. That way you shorten the corner and Harvin's able to turn it up a lot quicker. Harvin make just about anybody look slow, though. <laughs> Ball's at the three, second down, and goal to go for the Gators. This is where the Gators would like to be able to punch this football in. Power formation. Deshaun Wynn. Going to take the handoff straight up the middle and in for the touchdown. Gators just pounding it right up the middle in that power formation. And David, that's what you want to see. The offensive line, this is how they get their, their, their confidence and they start to feel good about themselves. You got one touchdown passing, one touchdown running. Very, very good football when you got balance and uh, last year this football team was able to rush the football 19 times for touchdowns and they also threw it 20 times for touchdowns like good I said balance. balance one and one here so far today win who rushed for eight or rather seven touchdowns a year ago this is his 20th touchdown carry of his career in his fifth year out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And look at that blocking right up the middle. And, and I'll tell you, we, we, we didn't say anything about Jason Watkins, a redshirt sophomore. He lines up at the tight end position and does a nice job of coming down, creating a seam for Deshaun Wynn. These three guys right here, this guy right there, that's Jason Watkins. Watch the block that he gets. He just crushes everything down. Miller comes around, leads through, and Deshaun Wynn just finds a hole and creeps through it. Well, the Gators uh, with good push by the offensive line and a solid run by Deshaun Wynn, able to take their first lead of 2006. They fell behind 7-0. On their first series, Chris Leak threw an interception. Several plays later, Jeremy Young threw a touchdown pass to Carter. Florida answered on the final play of the first period on a 21-yard scoring strike from Chris Leak to Dallas Baker. And now the Gators have gone on top for the first time tonight, 14 to 7, on the short run by Deshaun Wynn. And David, what normally happens, once your offense turns it around, your defense comes alive. They have two straight three and outs, plus an interception in the last th uh, three possessions. Brandon Summerall on the return, brings the ball out to the 27-yard line, and that's where Southern Miss will take possession. Nat, I think a big part of the Gators' comeback, and you called it, I think the team came out too hyped up early. I think they had to get their game under control first and then get momentum away from Southern Miss. The defense did that. The big turnover, the interception by Tony Joyner, led to one score. Then the offense got their act together, a little bit more discipline on the offensive line and making better plays. And I think once they got that settled down, they were able to get control of their game and now take control of this game. Well, I agree with you there, Steve. Uh, well put. Florida's offensive line really settling down. One of the most uh, inexperienced offensive lines in college football. As the short pass is uh, thrown and caught on first down, Reggie Nelson 
Able to make the stop on Joe Singleton. Maybe a trend now for Southern Mississippi as a, a two-step drop and a quick <laughs> toss to avoid the pressure. That might not be a bad idea coming up at halftime. We'll take a look at next week's game against the University of Central Florida Golden Knights. 96 team going to be recognized. We'll cover that for you as well. Highlights of the first half and more from Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Hands off to Fletcher. Fletcher fighting to the 35-yard line, about a yard short of a first down. Javier Estopinan on the tackle, number 48. And we're going to see a, a lot of Estopinan. He has been moved from linebacker into the tackle position, number 48 for the Gators. And uh, boy, Greg Madison real high on him. He runs well. Good athlete. It looks like he's going to play a lot of tackle. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to play a lot of people. You know, what you want to do, especially early in the season, is keep your team fresh by playing a lot of people, getting them some, some experience. They're down less than a yard. Fletcher. Flags drop as Fletcher picks up the first down with the Gators pointing toward uh, the southern miss side of the ball. Prior to the snap, false start. Number one on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. Big tight end, Sean Nelson. Second mistake he's made this ball game. Dropped the wide open pass and then comes back, jumps offside. But I think you give that credit to these uh, Gator fans here that uh, it got a little loud down there. It makes it very difficult to hear the snap count. You're just trying to anticipate. They are uh, juiced up for sure. Catch Gator Hotline with Urban Meyer on Thursday, September 14th, 7, live from Beef O'Brady's on Northwest 43rd Street in Gainesville. The show can be heard on the Gator Radio Network and GatorZone.com. So instead of a first down for the Golden Eagles, it's third down and five from the 31. McDonald jumped over and apparently didn't get back. So the five yards are coming right back for Southern Mississippi. was in the neutral zone on the snap or he made contact one or the other. Outside on the defense in the neutral zone. Five yards, still third down. Let's go back and see if he was able to get back. Here he is there, right there. Well, he's just, uh, they snapped the ball while he was still in the neutral zone. Good play calling, though. You, you got to give uh, Jay Johnson a lot of credit. You give up a cheap five, you get it right back with your cadence. Now McDonald so frustrated with two torn ACLs last year. Chopping it a bit to get back out there here tonight. Just a little too eager. And the Golden Knights pick up the first down with Fletcher carrying it. To the 37 or 38 yard line. Siler made the tackle for the Gators. A penalty goes one way, penalty goes the other way, and the end result is the same as it was just a moment ago with Fletcher picking up a first down. Yeah, but it shows you where they feel their bread and butter is. That's be behind Travis Cooley, Robbie D'Angelo, and George Batiste as they uh, run it right up the middle. Both Cooley and Batiste are USA Conference all. Conference players, shall I say. And fourth year starters, both on the guards. And no Marcus Thomas tonight for the Gators. There's Earl Everett making the initial contact on Fletcher, then Tony Joyner coming up to finish off the play for a loss of a yard or two. Well, tonight, don't miss this season's first Geico Gator postgame on Sun Sports immediately after the Southern Miss game. Sun Sports picking up where the networks leave off by giving viewers exclusive extended postgame coverage hosted by Whit Watson and Brady Ackerman. Urban Meyer's team falling behind early. 7 to nothing. They're up 14-7 late in the second quarter. Second and 10. Young gives to Fletcher. That time, not much room between the tackles. And Fletcher dropped at the 41 after a gain of two. Gators are coming with these corner blitzes. That time we, we had Ryan Smith coming off the uh, corner. 
perfect position to get in and help on the tackle. Ryan Smith transferred from Utah. He's a junior and played for Urban Meyer a couple of uh, years ago. Really missed playing for this coaching staff. Chuck Heater, the <laughs> defensive backfield coach, very close with uh, Ryan Smith. And he was able to come in this preseason and win a starting job, which is really something with all the athletes on this Florida football team. And Ryan Smith, starting quarterback for the quarterback for the Gators. Intended for Nelson, batted down by Earl Everett. Well, Earl Everett is the best cover linebacker of the Gators, and uh, that time we saw why. You'll see the tight end, Nelson, tr starts to drag a cross. He just runs with him. Nice job of not drawing the interference, reaching out with that right hand and knocking the ball down. Last year, Everett actually had two interceptions from that weak linebacker slot. And barefoot will punt for the third time. He booms this one, Reggie Nelson, fielding it at the six-yard line. To the 20, collar down at the 20-yard line, and a flag comes in there late. After the 13-yard return, a 53-yard punt by Barefoot. Well, Nat, let's uh, revisit our keys to the game while the officials sort this out. Gators needing, uh, presented by Chevy, by the way, Gators needing to slow down this Southern Miss running game. They've done a good job of that. Southern Miss felt like they needed to run the football. What about your other keys here? Well, when you look at Southern Miss, they have given up 106 yards passing, which, you know, you cannot afford to do that. And when you look at the Gators' offensive line, they've been able to protect Leak. Leak has done a nice job of helping them out by scrambling around, and the defensive line has started to dominate the offensive line. Early on, they were giving up big chunks of yardage, but now they're starting to make their move. Leak has been sacked once. For the most part, though, has had to ample protection yeah, to run the offense but but the key is he understands that these guys are learning on the job and he's doing things to help them out david yep. penalty against florida backs uh, the gators up to the 10 yard line with only a minute 13 left in the second quarter a lot of pressure coming leak standing tall in the pocket his pass intended for caldwell is incomplete Andre Caldwell coming back from a broken leg, a broken femur. And uh, appears to have not lost his step, Nat. Yeah, he, he still has that speed. Uh, you know, one of the best things could have happened for Andre was early in the ball game. He took a shot, you know, had a chance to get hit, get have to get up off the ground, know that the knee is okay and that he's 100%. You know, when you first come back and you're just going through practice, mentally you feel good, but you haven't taken any shots yet. After taking that shot, you start to say, okay, I'm, I'm ready to play now. Calling himself the comeback kid for all that he's been through over the last almost 12 months. On the option, the ball fumbled, uh, or what, nope, picked up and uh, caught. Looked like it was dropped. But Caldwell able to hold on. Abanaconda there to make the stop at the 10-yard line. It'll be third down for Florida with only 47 seconds left in the quarter. Well, the last thing the Gators need right here is uh, some kind of miscue down there on that end of the field. Well, but this, it's still a safe play because no, it's you're, incomplete pass. you're in complete pass. Billy Lansko in motion. And the handoff to Deshaun Wynn. Wynn looking for the first down marker, and he got there with the, the clock still running. Now stopped while they move the chains, and 12 seconds left in the quarter. James Denley made the tackle for Southern Miss. Well, Nat, this first half, has it gone kind of like you expected? Or are you surprised that it's a 14-7 game? No, I expected for Southern Mississippi to come here and play good, tough football. But, you know, let's go back to that play. That was such an important play, picking up the first down, not having to punt, punt the football away. Because you know if you go back in punt formation, Southern Miss is coming for the block. So outstanding call once again by the Gator offense, picking up the first down on third and long. And the timeout used. Southern Mississippi using the timeout, their second of the half.
not exactly sure why. I can tell you why, David, simply because you don't want to get beat deep. You don't want to give up the big play. Well, they're going to talk about Let's talk coverage. About it. Make sure they're all on the same page. Watch Florida football with Urban Meyer to catch up with all the latest news about the Gator football squad. Program airs on Sun Sports Sundays at 12 noon. Urban Meyer in his second year as head coach of the Gators, his sixth year as a head coach overall. At uh, Bowling Green and at Utah, his teams much improved offensively from year one to year two. Bowling Green averaged about 10 points per game more in the second season. Utah about uh, 16 points per game more in season number two under Urban Meyer. Last year, the Florida Gators football team that averaged 28.6 points per game. That was fourth in the SEC, 49th in college football. Leak going to step up. Only a three-man rush. Chris looking for someone to throw it to. Now the gap closing between big number 91, Robert Henderson and Chris Leak. And Leak wisely hits the turf with the triple zeros on the scoreboard. It looked like he had eyes in the back yeah. of his head yeah. at that time. Oh. Now Chris Leak played the entire first half. The senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Gator fans uh, hoping to get their first look at Tim Tebow. We'll have to wait at least till the second half of tonight's season opener. As Leak and the Gators have a 14-7 lead against young Jeremy Young and this Southern Mississippi Golden Eagle football squad from Gainesville. Halftime from Gainesville, Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, and the Florida Gators against the University of Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles. Don't forget next week, once again, a 6 p.m. kickoff on Saturday from here in Gainesville as Florida takes on UCF, a big Sunshine State battle. The University of Central Florida Golden Knights come to the swamp. And that is a live pay-per-view telecast at 6 p.m. And, of course, breakfast with the Gators on Sunday at 8.30 a.m. right here on Sun Sports. We'll be back to the swamp in just a moment as our halftime continues. Welcome back to Gainesville, Florida, and Southern Mississippi. It is halftime, and tonight and all season long, the Gators celebrating 100 years of college football at the University of Florida, a football tradition rich with accomplishments, including six Southeastern Conference titles and, of course, the national title in 1996. And that 1996 team is being feeded here tonight at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. For more on that, let's go down to the field and Todd Lewis. And we thank you very much, David. 14-7 to 7 is the score right now. Plenty of good football remaining in the second half. And, of course, when the ball went up in the air just after 6 o'clock, it marked the 100th year of football here at the University of Florida. We've been talking about that during the entire broadcast. But there was a special year that the Reptile Nation deems legendary, and that being 1996, when the Gators went through the SEC, winning their fourth consecutive SEC championship, and then meeting their arch rival, Florida State, in the Nokia Sugar Bowl, going on to win that game 52 to 20, and securing the 1996 national championship, the first and only national championship for the Gators in football so far. It was a magical team led by Danny Warfel, of course, who went on to win a Heisman. And who can forget the passes he hit? Ike Hillier, Jacques Green, Riddell Anthony running the ball. Fred Taylor. It was a fantastic season, and it was a fantastic event before kickoff today because the 1996 National Championship team was here. About 100 players, coaches, and support team members all here to say hello to the Reptile Nation. And catching up with the major players, Steve Babick, who said hi to his old friends. The start of the 1996 season may well have begun hours after the 95 team suffered the Fiesta Bowl loss. The 96 group returned many of the key players from that 12-1 squad. An offense led by senior quarterback Danny Warfel was high octane again, putting up 55 and 62 points in the first two games. The first test would come in Knoxville 
and the Gators scored a 35-29 win. It all began on the play of the game when Warfield hit Redell Anthony on a 35-yard score on a 4th and 11 play early in the first quarter. What followed next was the fun and gun in full force with wins over Kentucky, Arkansas, LSU, and Georgia with the average score being 52-7. Florida had to escape the scare at Vanderbilt with a 28-21 win, but rebounded with 52 points against South Carolina to win another Eastern Division title and a fourth straight trip to the SEC title game. Game 11 matched up number one Florida at number two Florida State, and in a physical contest where Danny Warfel took hit after hit, the Gators' first loss came 24-21. Steve Spurrier had his team focus on another ring game in the Georgia Dome, and the Gators offense put up 45 points on Alabama. It was a game that featured big play after big play as Florida won their fourth straight SEC title. The Gators would get to the Sugar Bowl and a rematch with number one Florida State. The Gators made all the right adjustments from that first meeting. With Warfel in the shotgun, Florida passed for over 300 yards and Warfel hit Ike Hilliard for three touchdowns. With Fred Taylor and Terry Jackson getting in on the fun with a run, Florida gets revenge, thumping Florida State 52-20 and won their first ever football national championship. And as we mentioned, that 1996 national championship team honored before kickoff, and it was quite electric here at the Swamp. Here are some of the pictures. This season marks the 100th year of Florida football. To celebrate this milestone in Gator football history, we welcome back a very special group to the swamp. Ten years ago, this Gator team ran through their competition to finish the 96th season 12 and 1, capping the year with a 52 to 20 victory over the then number one Florida State Seminoles. They brought home the national championship to the Gator Nation. Please join us in welcoming back your 1996 National Championship football team. First, the support staff, including managers, trainers, doctors, and others who made the year possible. Assistant coaches Lawson Holland and Jim Collins, represented by his daughter Jennifer College Collins. And now the players, Tremaine Allen, Ernie Bando, Tyrone Baker, Ronnie Battle, Tim Bochamp, Tico Brown, Patrick Browning, Scott Bryan, Thaddeus Bullard, Jamie Campbell, Derek Chambers, and Chester. Jason Dean, Ernie Dubose, Craig Dudley, Jerome Evans, McDonald Ferguson, Chad Philly, Tony George, Test.
Face Injection, Ryan Kalick, Nafis Kareem, Matt Kelly, Keith Kelsey. And there, of course, Danny Warfel, the 1996 Heisman winner, leading the Gators to the national championship. Of course, he got a warm reception. And Steve Babbitt caught up with Danny Warfel right after the game. But we're, before that, we want to tell you about the reception that Steve Spurrier got from the crowd here. Of course, he's coming back in November, leading South Carolina. The first time he'll be on these sidelines wearing something besides orange and blue. But I can tell you, the 90,000 were very receptive seeing Steve Spurrier, the man who led them to that national championship. Our Steve Babbitt caught up with Danny Warfel, and here's his piece. With Gator quarterback Danny Warfel, of course, the 96 team being remembered uh, today, a special day. Danny, what was it like to see a lot of those former guys back after 10 years and over 100 players, staff, coaches come back? It was a, a wonderful afternoon. We're so thankful for the university to bring us back. Um, wonderful guys, wonderful memories. We've all changed a little bit, uh, but we had just such a, such a great time. When you look back on that 96 team, what made it so special? Why were you able to, to accomplish the goals you did? We, we, should we redo this? We're okay, keep going. Okay. All right. Well, we're right in the middle of the heart of Gator football here. Um, I just think we had such a unique combination of, of athletes, uh, great coaching, and, and just the things really fell into place for us. Uh, we were watching some highlights today. It's amazing just to look back at, at how good we were. It was just really fun. That offense was so explosive. What stood out to you as being quarterback of that offense? Some days you had to look back and say, wow, that, how did that work so well? You know, I don't think you really even appreciate it at the time. You just you do it. But looking back now, the run we had there, especially in the middle of the 96 season, uh, it was just amazing. You know, the, the receivers were clicking. The linemen were doing great. And the defense was getting turnovers, getting us the ball. Uh, you, sometimes I pinch myself and wonder, did it really happen? Was there any point in time during that 96 year that you looked at a certain game or a certain moment and said, we got something special going on right now? Well, I think definitely, um, you know, when we when we beat Tennessee up there, that was just such a, a big win for us. And it's probably the three game run with Auburn, LSU and Georgia when it just all three of those games against SEC powerhouses. When we were able to just run, it just it was an amazing run. And we thought, man, this could be it. You get a second chance at Florida State. What you guys learned from that first meeting that helped you in the Sugar Bowl? I think the biggest thing was the shotgun. We put the shotgun in, and it gave me just a little bit more time just to get the ball out there. And once Ike and Redell and Quez got it in their hands, they were phenomenal. How good was that game as far as uh, performance-wise? Looking back at the Sugar Bowl, what stood out with that offense? Uh, we just really were uh, – the, the whole thing came together. And, again, the shotgun gave us enough time to run the offense. They attacked so much that they were doing a lot of man coverage. And, you know, if you just make, make, make the shots you could do, you get it. And the defense played so well, got a lot of turnovers for us. Uh, it was just, a, you know, the greatest game ever. What a wonderful night. Thanks, Danny. Congratulations. All right, thank you. And it was a fantastic scene seeing all those phenomenal, legendary players here at the Swamp. 90,000 people receiving them warmly, and especially Steve Spurrier. We still didn't know how this crowd would receive Steve Spurrier, but I can tell you he got the loudest cheer, and the Reptile Nation embraced him as he came back to the swamp. By the way, that 1996 team averaging over 46 points per game. All right, we got a second half of football coming at you. 14 to 7 is the score right now. The Florida Gators on top. We'll see if they can hang on, and who knows, this might be the first game on the road to another national championship. As we get ready for the second half of football from Ben Hill Griffin Stadium on the campus of the University of Florida. 14 to 7, our halftime score. The Gators on top, but they did not uh, even tie the game that more until late in the first quarter. They fell behind 7 0 and uh, able to take a second quarter lead 14 7. Your thoughts uh, briefly on the first half of the game to this point? Well, I think they just came out. They were all juiced up. Usually what you tell your team is you still got to read your keys. You got to come out with emotion, but it's got to be controlled emotion. And I don't think the Gators did that. But on the other side, I think uh, the Golden Eagles came out. They were able to weather that emotion and get off their great start. Well, there's no question. Southern Mississippi is a team that is not afraid to come in here and play a top 10 football team. 
And the Golden Eagles got off to a terrific start. They've got a tremendous tight end who made a big, big play on their first series and then their touchdown after the league pass interception. And this gets the uh, Golden Eagles off to a great start. Jeremy Young gets his first touchdown pass of his career to Damian Carter. And then here come the Gators as Chris Leak gets the ball out to Ingram. Ingram does a nice job catching the football, getting up, getting up field for the first down. And then just a nice job by Chris Lee of buying time and then going to his favorite receiver, Dallas Baker, to tie the score at 7-7. Gators come back to, with a nice little razzle-dazzle play, getting the ball in the hands of Percy Har Harvins, and he does a nice job taking the ball down to the nine-yard line, and that sets up this run by Deshaun Wendt as he follows the blocking of that left side of the Gator offensive line, putting the Gators up 14-7 at half. All right, let's take a look at our inside the game and some of the keys that we talked about before the game began. The Gators offensive line, very inexperienced. One of the most inexperienced offensive lines in college football. And would they be able to protect Chris Leak? Would the Gators be able to run the football? And I think uh, so far the offensive line has done a pretty nice job. Yeah, I think they've done an uh, uh, ex excellent job of protecting the quarterback and running the football. So. I think the offensive line is uh, coming, is getting experience in a hurry. The Gator ground game also a pretty good job in the first half. Deshaun Wynn with a touchdown run, and Florida's secondary also has played some outstanding football as we look inside the game for the Florida Gators. Steve Babick standing by with head coach Urban Meyer. Some of the adjustments you'll make here in the second half. We're going to play the way we were supposed to play. We took our kickoff return team, put us in a bad field position, and then we gave one up to the defense. We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't play like that. So we're going to play the way we play. That's great field position and take some more shots in offense. But we got to hit those shots. As the second, as the first half went, you got some good things happening out there. What did you like in that first half? I just like the way we're playing defense. I don't like the way we're playing offense right now. We just got to make some of those plays. We're not making them. Deshaun Wynn running pretty hard. Uh, not hard enough. Well, there you hear it. Deshaun Wynn running hard, but Coach Myers says not hard enough. Well, but also the turnovers so positive in favor of the Gators last year. This fall club plus 18 in turnovers a year ago. So that early pass interception thrown by Chris Lee set the table for Southern Mississippi to jump out to a 7 to nothing lead. And we're underway as Jonathan Phillips kicks the ball off to start the second half. And the Golden Eagles kicking it around a little bit as Summerall fumbled it. And the ball was picked up by number 20, Ladarius Webb. And down Webb goes at about the 13-yard line. Tremaine McCollum made the tackle for the University of Southern Mississippi. We're joined in uh, the booth by one of the Gator greats from that 1996 national championship team, Tony George, standing next to Nat Moore and uh, up here with us in the broadcast booth. Tony, thanks for joining us here. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, you had such a tremendous career for the Gators that sophomore year in 1996 certainly one to remember for you and your teammates it truly is I tell you uh, you never get a chance to, everybody doesn't have a chance to win a national championship and it's awesome feeling to come back and, and get this love that, that Gators spread around the nation and we start the third quarter Fletcher knocked out of bounds by Tony Joyner and uh, short pickup on the first down play well, Tony, you know, you've had an opportunity to watch these Gators play. I know that the, right now you have a, um, a business where you train people to work out a little bit. Tell us a little bit about that. What's keeping you busy nowadays? Well, now I have, um, I do a lot of sport-specific training, and I also do a lot of general fitness training. Um, primarily, I deal with um, a lot of athletes, a lot of high-profile athletes, but also um, in the general fitness realm, I'm just trying to make everyone feel healthy about themselves. Fletcher, the ball carrier again. Brandon Seiler is there, the middle linebacker out of Orlando with another tackle, having a big game on this opening night for the Florida Gators. Well, you're a defensive player. You had a chance to play on that 96 football team that won it all. When you look at this defense, what do you see? Do you see any similarities? Anything that you can take from what you did in 96 or what that team did in 96 that these young guys can use? Well, it's funny is that as every, every time that you come back, you always look at that player that that sort of resembles you. And you see that in, in every asset. I, I can see a lot of Lawrence Rice out there, a couple of Anthony Lots. And once you see that uh, gel and put a nucleus together, 
you can kind of start saying, hey, this guy, these guys are going to put together a team that, that sort of resembles what we had as our, our defense. And the defense really coming together after a little bit of a slow start here tonight. Greg Madison firing up his troops, three and out for Southern Miss to start the second half, and the Golden Eagles will have to punt the football. Tony, wondering when in uh, 1996 you guys began to have a feeling that it could be a special season. What did it happen early in the year or later on, or when did you know that this could be a special year in the national championship year? It was the bitter taste that was left in '95. Um, yeah. us, us guys, we we kind of put everything together, where we all knew that we didn't play our best game. We played in front of a national championship crowd, and we did not perform. And that that hunger kept us going. All right, we're going to talk more with Tony George when we come back. Right now, the Gators take the football early in the third quarter, leading the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss 14 to seven. We'll be back. We're back in Gainesville. Florida takes possession of the ball for the first time in the second half, leading the Golden Eagles 14 to 7. And it'll be first down as Chris Leak awaits the snap. David Steele, Nat Moore, and Tony George from that 96 national championship team. In the booth, uh, going to spend a couple of minutes uh, with us here. Tony, we appreciate you stepping in. You, uh, not a Florida native from Cincinnati. Now you live in Charlotte, but the Gator Nation goes uh, nationwide, doesn't it? It does, and uh, I tell you, we have just as big a fan base there in Charlotte as we do in Cincinnati, as we do anywhere that we go. We Gators are just well known, and, and the discipline that we have throughout this nation is unbelievable. What a reception you guys, your team received here tonight, both pregame and halftime. You mentioned the 96 Gators, and fans uh, all, Gator Nation going to go wild wherever you are. That is true, and I tell you, this, the ovation that was received tonight was, I tell you, one, was well received. But also, it was it was very, 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 I, I tell you, you just can't put it in words because it leaves you in an indescribable feeling. I tell you, you don't realize the, the lives that you've touched along the way oh, yeah. until after you come back and receive an ovation like that. Well, I tell you, Tony, I, I uh, had a chance to play for a Super Bowl championship, never had a chance to play for a college championship, and we'll finish this thought. I think we're getting ready to take a commercial break, but we come back, I want you to tell us a little bit about what it felt like on that night after okay. the game was over. Okay. Uh, also that celebration uh, in January, a couple of weeks later when you came back. That was quite a night too. We'll talk about that when we come back. And we're back, uh, the season opener for the Gators. Second down and 10, they lead Southern Miss 14 to seven early in the third quarter. And Chris Leak out of the shotgun formation at the 43 yard line. Well, this play has been very good to the Gators tonight. Percy Harvin trying to make something really special out of it. And down he goes at the 35-yard line, and a flag is dropped late on the play. Guys, this guy, Percy Harvins, has speed to burn. He's a natural running back that plays receiver, is what I'm seeing here this afternoon. Well, he's already electrified this capacity crowd in the swamp two or three times tonight. Now the officials talking about uh, the flag. Five yards to the end of the run. First down. An inverted face pass ball, five yard penalty, and another look. Good job by the left side of the offensive line of just getting everybody back off the football. Lodge Har Harvin to actually <laughs> look like he stepped out of bounds there as he gets grabbed by the uh, inadvertent face mask. But, you know, this young man has tremendous speed, and he's going to be exciting for years to come. Yes, he is. And more Tony George with us. For another couple of minutes here in the booth as the Gators drive the football early in the third quarter. Tony, you like this Urban Meyer uh, staff and, and the, the way they play, play football? Is under review. Yes, this, this Urban Meyer has done a great job. First of all, coming back and reaching back to the older players that have that know how to and and have won championships. So he's trying to mold and instill that into his younger players. And what better way of doing it by just bringing back guys that have been champs and know how to do it? He really has reached out to to the Gator uh, Letterman, the football Letterman. Done a great job. There's Jeff Bauer, the Southern Mississippi coach, and they have challenged the play. I think exactly what you're right talking there. about, Nat, that he stepped out of bounds. Right here, you'll see that uh, left foot is on the white chart. But yeah. I question using the one challenge that a coach has in this situation. I mean, it's going to 
Well, going to save him a, a few yards, but uh, there could be a more critical situation. Well, also the, the five-yard penalty because he stepped out of bounds before the penalty already had a first down. Uh, but I think this comes from the booth because now they're looking at everything up in the booth, and then a coach can ha can have one challenge per ball game where if he d he sees something, they don't challenge it. He could by calling timeout. So I don't know if this came from the coach or from the booth. All right. Well, uh, we were told it was from the coach, but that could be incorrect information. We're waiting for the uh, official word. And, and what the coach has to do is call timeout. You know, you, there's right. no flag or anything. You call timeout and you tell them you want to. You get the timeout back you get the if timeout the challenge back is, if you is upheld. There's the, the replay booth in the press box at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. You know, uh, while we have a minute, we can uh, reminisce a little bit with Tony Jordan. You made a lot of big plays for the Gators from your safety position. Probably none bigger, though, uh, right, Steve Babick, than against Tennessee and Peyton Manning. You remember that one? Steve's down on the uh, field. No Tony. question about that, David. That was one of the great plays, and uh, one of the loudest times I ever heard that when Tony George picked that ball off and started running back. It was amazing. The pressure helped him out. Tony made that catch, and once Tony got by the, the first wave, he just had to make sure he could run out. He, he could outrun that Tennessee defense. He did, and as he ran to that end zone, it got louder and louder. Tony, pretty good right there. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good. I tell you, I, I relive that feeling every day of my life, man. I tell you, it's, it's truly outstanding. Uh, <laughs> you can never say enough about your teammates because it was a lot of those guys that made that play happen for me. And you guys were really close, too, Tony. Those Gator teams back then, especially the 96 unit, you were saying earlier, you guys did a lot of things together off the field. We did. We went to movies together. We went to bowling together. We went shopping together. We did just about everything together. We even went to Walmart together and got all our ne <laughs> necessities together. But that's how we had to do it. We knew that we were going to be the only ones that had our backs out there on the field. So what better way to, to, mail, uh, to mold and gel together than to put us all together, I mean, come together on the field. All right. Looks like we have a decision. There you see once again where Harbin's actually looks as if he steps on the uh, sideline. Now they got to figure out what to do. So the penalty would be waved off, I would guess, huh? I, I would think so because uh, he actually stepped After out review, of bounds. There's video evidence that shows that the runner stepped out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Therefore, the face mask is a dead ball foul that will be 15 yards tacked <laughs> on to wow. the end of the run. First down. Wow. So now you really have to question Wait a minute. the sanity of Wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Let's oh. think about this. You win the challenge, but you lose 10 yards. Huh. Sometimes you, they say life is not fair, David. Well, a veteran <laughs> head coach is shaking his head. He can't figure it out uh. either. Oh, a dead ball foul. It doesn't wipe off the penalty. Yeah. It's, a, it's a dead ball foul. After... Harvin stepped out of bounds, so now the Gators have the ball at the 24-yard line. We still don't know for sure if Jeff Bauer called for the uh, review or if the replay booth did it on their own. Well, let's, well, let's hope, give him the benefit of the let's doubt. Let's hope he didn't know because otherwise he didn't know the rule and <laughs> he cost his team an additional 10 yards. <laughs> yeah, but he still got his timeout. <laughs> Great job by the uh, guys in the truck and our cameraman down on the field being right on top of it. Tony, you like the new rules, uh, you know, the replay rules that have been put in since you played college football and now the new rules this year to shorten the games? Well, you know, I think it's fair. Uh, again, I, I just think football should just be played. I mean, you're going to miss some plays. You know, we're all human. The referees are human. And, you know, to kind of slow the game, I mean, I, I don't know who's benefiting from it more. I and mean, then you just hope that a close situation never happens. Yeah. Well, you shorten the game with some rules and you, you lengthen it with others. That's the replay, true. <laughs> replay length, uh, lengthens it. He's done more, is taken down by Martavius Prince. This game has no rhythm right now, early in the third quarter. There's timeouts and penalties and the officials trying to figure out how far to mark off the ball. <laughs> and yet the Gators uh, still threatening to score here at the Southern Miss 27-yard line. And, and that's what you'd like to be able to see them do. Come out of the uh, halftime, make the adjustments, move the ball down the field, put some points on the board, sort of lengthen that lead that they've got. 
second and ten. That's Dallas Baker in motion. And the ball swung out and knocked down by Chatelaine and incomplete. Back at the 45-yard line, Matthew Chatelaine, a big senior, fifth-year man out of Metairie, Louisiana. The Southern Mississippi team affected by Hurricane Katrina last year. They had two games delayed last year, one by Ivan the year before. As you look at a nice play by Chatelaine from that New Orleans area, Metairie, Louisiana. Had to move to Memphis, their headquarters, moving out of Hattiesburg. And can you imagine, Tony, having your, your season uprooted like that? No, that's, that's very difficult. And to see these guys bounce back from that, you just got to commend them for their effort of being able to come back and challenge themselves to do this job. Well, they won seven games last year. They've given the Gators all they can handle so far tonight. Pressure on. The Gators tried to set up the screen, but one man got through, and Dallas Baker is chucked to the ground at the 34-yard line by Caleb Hendricks. That is a very tough play to run against a man coverage, and Tony George will tell you that. If the quarterback has no responsibility but that receiver, as soon as he sees the receiver take a step, he's driving on the football. So, therefore, there's no way to run that play. The tackle that's coming out to try and get the kickout block cannot get there, David. You know, just a tough play to run into a man coverage situation. That is it's very true. Uh, you just hope that it, that if you're going to catch a going to catch a coverage in, you want to catch him in zone <laughs> against that play. <laughs> well, sometimes you, you get it right, sometimes you don't. Leak has gotten it right more often than not in his career, completing more than 60 percent of his passes. Pressure again from the outside, and Leak goes down at the 40-yard line. That's Hendricks again. That's two big plays in a row by senior Caleb Hendricks out of Birmingham, Alabama. That time, Hendricks was able to beat the block of the fullback, Billy Latsko. Normally, Billy does a good job of picking up blitzes. He comes, it's a corner blitz. This time he comes. Billy just doesn't see him until the last minute. He's able to get in, get the sack. Second sack of the afternoon on Chris Lee. Their quarterbacks were sacked 35 times last year. And the Gators uh, really hoping to vastly improve upon that this season. Oh, Southern Mississippi taking over possession of the football at the 40 yard line. Jeremy Young will run the ball. And is brought down from behind at the 50 yard line. A gain of about 10 yards. And uh, Jarvis Moss able to bring him down from behind. Moss. Very quick, tremendous pursuit man on the outside and had to chase down Young from behind. Yeah, quarterback draw, nice job of setting it up, taking a couple steps back, giving everything a chance to clear, and then hitting it in the gap between the tackle and the guard for first down. Tony, you're looking at another pretty good number one in that Gators secondary, Reggie Nelson. That must bring back memories seeing Nelson wear your jersey and play as well as he does. It does, I tell you. Uh, First it was Keywon Ratliff, and, th and then I look back again, and then, this, then I see Reggie Nelson out there. And I tell you, this kid is phenomenal, man. I, his, his work ethic, everything about me reminds me, of, it reminds me of how I was out there on the field. This is another good look. Nice job by Reggie. He sees that they've got the blitz on, but great job of keeping leverage on the receiver, not mm. overrunning, you know, using the sideline as an additional tackler. It was a gain of six, however, and it's second and four. Fletcher picks up the first down and is dragged out of bounds by Nelson at the 35-yard line. So the Golden Eagles on the march after Florida, unable to convert on a fourth down, and that gave uh, Southern Miss good field position. Now they're moving the ball again. Well, they like to pull their guards, but this time, just nice job by the right guard, George Batiste, getting outside, giving him a lane, sealing off everything to the inside. Fletcher able to get good yardage. Gator defense needing to stand up here as they're trying to protect a seven-point lead. Play action fake. Young with good protection. Batted away at the 12-yard line. A beautiful play by Tony Joyner, who was much improved over a year ago. The junior from Haines City.
tremendous high school quarterback as a lot of these guys are that play football at this level and a terrific play there. Uh, outstanding play by Tony Jonah coming around with that right hand not grabbing with the left but there's just too much time for Young to throw this football. You're getting no pressure from the defensive line. Good clean pocket for him to step up and throw the football. If it wasn't for an outstanding play on Jonah's part that should have been a completion. Second and ten. And they had the screen set up fairly nicely. Fletcher had some running room if he was able to bring that ball in, but he could not. It'll be third down and ten. Tony, that what's the offensive series for the Gators? Tony, uh, Deshaun Wynn came out, and Deshaun Wynn was looked at by the trainer and doctor, and then they decided to take him to the south end zone locker room. It looked like they were checking the uh, shoulder area near the neck, and so we'll be getting an updated report on Deshaun Wynn. We'll pass that along. Well, that's not uh, not good news for the Gators. Deshaun Wynn and Keystun Moore, two backs that uh, Van Mullen felt very good about having ready to go. Third down and ten. Quarterback draw. Earl Everett slows him down, and then he is brought down by Brandon Seiler, short of the first down. It'll be fourth down, and we may see the Golden Eagle field goal team. I tell you, Jay Johnson has saw, has saw something in this Gator defense where on third down, even on first and second down now, he's taking advantage of his quarterback's athleticism because the defense in is trying to get an outside rush. The tackle is going inside. There's no cohesiveness. It creates a normal gap for the quarterback to go through. He came very close to picking up the first down. This is going to be a 46-yard attempt by Darren McCaleb. His career long is 47. This one has plenty of distance, but it is no good. Well, McCaleb, who's only missed five field goal attempts in his career, missing his sixth, and the Gators protect the 14-7 lead. Tony George, thanks for standing in with us. Always great to see you and all your 96 Gators. Congratulations and good luck in the future. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Tony George from the 96 National Championship team. Nat and I will be back as the Gators take the football when we return, leading Southern Miss 14-7. Gainesville from the swamp, David Steele and Nat Moore. And uh, Tony George, we appreciate him stopping by as the Gators lead Southern Mississippi 14 to 7. And let's revisit our inside the game. Keys for the Gators, protecting Chris Leak. Leak has been sacked a couple of times, but has thrown for 103 yards. One touchdown and was sacked for the second time just a moment ago. Florida rushing the football almost 100 yards for the night. Percy Harvin has done most of uh, the damage carrying the ball on uh, several end arounds and as far as the Gators secondary play is concerned it has been outstanding Tony Joyner with the interception and the Golden Eagles have yet to get any consistent play in their passing game here tonight right now this uh, Golden Eagle defense standing tall in the third quarter Martavius Prince with another stop and no gain on the first down play. In fact, a loss of a couple of yards. And, and this team reminds me of some of the Alabama teams, some of the, the old University of Miami teams, where they've got so much speed running lateral that it's very, very difficult to get outside. So, you know, if the Gators want to be able to run this football, they're going to have to hit some seams up the middle. And very tough to consistently run the football tonight. Southern Mississippi showing the Gators a lot of different looks. Here's a four-man rush and Leak throwing it to Dallas Baker, who has the catch and out of bounds he goes at the 36-yard line. Two or three yards short of a first down. Reception number four for Baker. And David, I'm glad you said that. This ball's gonna go out to the right side, but this is a 10-yard route. You know, it's a second and 12, you run your 10-yard route. If, if you try and go 12 yards, it throws off the timing. Leak gets back, he throws this on rhythm, perfect timing. Gets the ball to Dallas Baker. Gives yourself a good third down and short situation. The Gators line up with no backs. And Leak with two men wide left and right. Blitz coming from the middle and the outside. Leak's pass is incomplete. Intended for Baker again and a late flag. But here it comes. As Hendricks was there a little bit too soon it would appear on Dallas Baker. Well, the Gators are going to get the benefit of this call, but David, I'm telling you, we're living dangerously because Chris Lee is getting hit by unblocked.
defenders each and every time. Right here, just as he releases the football, you've got a free blitzer coming on him with nobody protecting him. Pass interference. Number 14 on the defense. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Well, that was very close. Uh, looked like a pretty good play. Jeff Bauer certainly disagrees with this call. Well, most coaches will disagree, and, and, and I don't blame Jeff, but I think what the officials call is you made the play with the left hand, but you had the right arm wrapped around the receiver. It is a first down for the Gators to the 44-yard line. Leak scrambling again and has to throw it away. So the Gators now second down and 10. It's been a choppy third quarter here. We're halfway through the period. And Steve, uh, a moment ago on that uh, on that uh, timeout call, did, did you get any more information on whether or not Jeff Bauer challenged that play a moment ago? Yeah, you had a great question, David. It was upstairs that called for the replay because they could see that the player stepped out of bounds and the spot was missed. And after this play's run, I'll explain to you exactly what happened and why Bauer got upset. All right. So it was not Jeff Bauer that called for the officials to look at it. Leak under extreme pressure again, but stands tall in that pocket and throws a bullet to Baker. Let's go back to Steve. Okay, so basically where the the ball was marked, the face mask was called an incidental five yarder when they reviewed it and had to remark it that face mask became a 15 yarder because of where it was and so after they respotted the ball and marked off 15 yards that's when Jeff Bauer said whoa whoa I got the short end of this deal but it was never called by Jeff Bauer it was all done from upstairs in the replay booth and that's why it went from a five yarder to a 15 yarder with the face mask because of the spot all right so the three time conference USA coach of the year did not call for that one terrific catch by Baker well, Leak is really looking for number 81 on this drive. Matt, that's his third catch of this drive, his sixth catch of the night. Now, David, I, I sure hope we got an end zone lock because it is true that Chris Leak locks in on Chris on, on Dallas Baker because Dallas is running great routes, finds the hole in the zone, sits down, but Jamal Cornelius is running free, 20 yards been behind the entire defense, and Chris never saw him. Good catch by Dallas Baker. Senior out of New Smyrna Beach. That's seven catches now for Baker. And a give to Keystun Moore. And Moore is hit around the ankles and dropped by Denley near the line of scrimmage. Well, these linebackers can really pursue to the football for Southern Mississippi. Denley, McGrath, Abanaconda. Very talented defensive football team. Well, and a lot of times at linebacker position, when you've got great defensive linemen, you're assigned to a back, and that's your man, especially if it's man coverage. And the Gators have been running that play where they bring the slot guy in motion, pull the corners, the slot guy out of there, and then run it back to that soft corner. But that time, Henley wouldn't hear it. Well, Henley showing good speed. Here comes the blitz up the middle, and the Gators swing it out. Picking up good yardage for a first down. Florida able to move the football as uh, this gambling Southern Mississippi defense. You never know where they're going to come from as Moore picks up the first down. Chatelaine made the tackle. Good soft throw by Chris, just getting the ball up and over Chatelaine. Moore comes in. To, most people forget last year he started the ball game as a receiver, even though he's a tailback. You know, great hands. Moore had 13 catches last year. Florida first down at the 30 yard line. That's Moore lined up wide to the left. Now in the backfield takes a, a fake from Leak. Now Chris throwing it for Cornelius. He's got it. Touchdown Florida. Beautifully thrown pass by Chris Leak right on the fingertips of Cornelius. And David, that's a perfect indication. Earlier I said Jamal Cornelius was behind the entire defense and he didn't get the ball. They threw it to Baker. He didn't jump up and scream and make noise. This time everybody is open. And who does he go to? Jamal Cornelius in the corner of the end zone. An outstanding catch as he's able to beat number 39. 
Now Cornelius holds it in. His fifth career touchdown reception. Leak has thrown two touchdown strikes tonight and now has 67 in his brilliant Gator career. He's moved number three all time Gator passing beyond Rex Grossman in both completions and attempts tonight as well. There's Leak with the headphones on talking to the coaching staff upstairs. An impressive drive, eight plays, 71 yards, and a 29 yard scoring toss from Leak to Cornelius. And, and that's one of the things that happened, David. When you start playing that aggressive defense, you get caught in man coverage quite a bit. And if uh, the defensive linemen or the blitz don't get there, you're going to have safeties trying to cover receivers. And there was just no way that the, the safety could run with Jamal Cornelius. I have, you know, eventually we got to find out who's the fastest. Is it Cornelius? Or is it Percy Harvins? Because uh, they both look like they've got tremendous speed. Uh, Caldwell can run, too. Yeah, but, you know, we're we going to give him a couple weeks to get healthy, get back, uh, get back uh -huh. and then we're going to have a three-man race. A lot of speed on this Florida team. Jared Faison also is a guy with terrific speed, a freshman that has not made a play tonight. He has been on the field, but has not had a chance to make the play. There's Jonathan Phillips ready to kick it off for the Gators. Another guy that we have not seen here tonight that was instrumental last year for the Gators at the tailback position is Marcus Manson. Yeah. Running third team behind Win and Moore. Summerall brings it out from the goal line. And down he goes, hit by Nick Brooks. Number 36, a good special teams play in the open field by Brooks. Summerall looked like he had a big play there, but a nice job by the Gator special teams kick coverage team of everybody staying in their lane. And that way, when Summerall decided to cut it back, Brooks was right there to make the play. Well, that the Gators finally have a little breathing room. Two touchdown lead now, and it took them to near the end of the third quarter to get this 21 to 7 advantage. They fell behind early, 7 to nothing after an early turnover, but seem to have things uh, going their way at this moment. Well, they're starting to starting to get things. They're starting to try and wear this football team down. But let's not forget, this is a good football team here. And they are not going to go down as Fletcher picks up big yardage on first down to the 38-yard line before Kyle Jackson makes the stop for the Gators. Here's another look at the touchdown. Chris Lee has all day to throw the football. You see him slide up, and there you see Sumrall, Brandon Sumrall, trying to cover the fleet. Jamal Cornelius, not going to happen. And so can the offensive line protect Chris Lee? They did on that play and gave him enough time to throw a beautiful ball. Nice setup play. Fletcher catching it on the run. Nelson trying to chase him down. Finally taken down by Jackson, but... Across midfield and into Florida territory is freshman Damian Fletcher. A 17-yard play for Southern Mississippi. Little swing pass. Uh, nice job by Fletcher setting it up, looking like he's going to block, and then just flare it out. Young gets him the football with open field in front of him. Here's a good look at the freshman from Biloxi, Mississippi. We've been running ahead of Cody Hall and Larry Thomas tonight. Two more experienced backs. It is Thomas in the backfield now out of the eye formation. Young throwing deep for the freshman Gray. Got all tangled up with Reggie Lewis, and we've got a flag. Here's another look at it. Reggie Lewis is in great position. But Bray does a nice job of drawing the interference right there by stopping. That also had the forearm into the chest of Reggie Lewis. Uh, have they taken the flag away? Yeah, they picked it up. They, yeah. they ruled the ball was uncatchable. The ball was thrown out of bounds. I think that's a good no call. Because contact was, uh, was equal on both sides, regardless of whether the ball was catchable sure. or not. Well, here's another look at it. But let's look and see exactly where the ball lands. And it's out of bounds, so the ball was uncatchable is what they ruled. Mm. It's a close call. Jeff Bauer shaking his head over that call as well. It's second down and 10 from the Florida, 44. Florida showing a blitz, and here they come. 
Young's pass is a bullet caught for a first down at the Florida 34 yard line. There's that freshman Rodney Gray again. And a nice job by the junior quarterback Jeremy Young to stand in there knowing he was going to get popped. I'll tell you what, he's got a cannon too. He stands in there, takes the punishment, knows where he wants to go with the football, gets it there in a hurry. Outstanding catch by Rodney Gray as he's got Smith hanging all over him. First down and 10 for the Golden Eagles, trailing by two touchdowns. Young firing. And it is intercepted. Reggie Nelson picks it off in the end zone. David. Reggie Nelson gets this interception. And I tell you this here. We always talk about communication. We talk about chemistry. That time, Kyle Jackson is coming from the other safety slot as Reggie is in a trail technique. Now, you'll watch it right here at the top. You'll see Kyle Jackson steady yelling, ball, ball, ball. It tells Reggie to turn, locate the football. He comes up with the interception. Great communication between the two safeties that time. Here's another look. You, as, a safe, as a defender, you've got to know that you're beat. You've got, you've got uh, Barnes behind you, so you're trying to catch up. You don't know when to turn to look for the football, but all of a sudden you've got a teammate just saying, ball, ball, ball. That's why they do those drills in practice. Communication leads to an interception. Nelson's second interception with the Gators. He got one against Georgia last year. Leak's pass is caught by Caldwell at the 26, a gain of six yards on the first down play. I'll mark him at the 27. We'll call it a seven-yard game. But, uh, boy, Reggie Nelson, he, he is a playmaker. The Gators thought they were going to have to use him at cornerback this season because of depth problems. Then Ryan Smith comes and uh, is able to win a cornerback position. You're able to move Nelson back to safety where he really is capable of making a lot of big plays and big pick off there. Well, it's a luxury when you can keep a guy like Reggie Nelson in the center of the field where he can help out everybody on defense. This is Marcus Manson getting his first call. No, I'm sorry, it's Keystone Moore. I thought Manson had snuck in there, but it's Moore the ball carrier. We saw Wynn go to the locker room earlier in this third quarter. Deshaun Wynn, who started the game at the running back spot for the Gators. Now it's Moore. Well, David, this is the second time this afternoon that uh, Southern Miss has had an outstanding drive going and then the Gators come up with a big interception. Yep. Florida leads by two touchdowns late in the third quarter. They're facing a third down and five from their 25 yard line. Leak steps up, flag flies and down goes Leak at the 22, Andre Mason. Big number 91, a junior from Richmond, California. Makes the tackle. Or rather, that's Henderson on the stop number 91. Let's see what the flag is. Holding. Number 79 on the offense. That penalty is refused. Fourth down. Got a hot one. Well, there's uh, Urban Meyer and our Geico quote of the game. Urban talking about Chris Leak. He says, Chris is a new guy. I love Chris Leak. If we keep him healthy, he's going to have a fine year. And we've seen Leak make some big plays tonight in the opener against Southern Mississippi. No quarterback controversy at Florida. That's quite obvious as Leak has gone the distance late in the third quarter. Eric Wilbur punting it away, a low line drive, and a fair catch is made at the 40-yard line. Hawk with a fair catch after the 38-yard punt by Eric Wilbur. Well, Friday at 7 on Sun Sports, Rec Warehouse College Kickoff gets a jump start on the weekend of college football. Join Whit Watson along with Brady Ackerman. They'll break down UCF's visit to the Swamp and also find out how you could win the ultimate game room. Rec Warehouse College Kickoff Friday at 7, only on Sun Sports. you got to see that, uh, that ultimate game room. They've got it on display on that show on Friday night. 
First down and 10 for Southern Mississippi. Jeremy Young dancing around back there, and a flag is thrown as Young throws the ball away. Intended for the fullback, Bobby Wheatley. I tell you, that's starting to show you that uh, Jeremy Young is getting comfortable back there, David. You know, he looked downfield, he looked downfield, looked downfield, and then he realized, you know, everything's starting to break down. I got to get rid of the football. He throws it away. You know, a young quarterback normally would have held up oh, to it. Number 70 on the offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Big George Batiste called for the hold. The all conference USA man in uh, his fourth year as a starter in this program. There are the numbers on Jeremy Young. And he started out, David, six for six. So since then, he's went three for 14. Leaders turning up the pressure. Yeah. Well, they had great field position on their first possession after the interception. Marched in for the score. Have not scored since. Southern Miss. Young deflected and intercepted by Reggie Lewis. The former wide receiver looking for some running room. And he's got some daylight now. And a big block by Reggie Nelson. Lewis finally taken down at the five-yard line. Reggie Lewis, a former wide receiver. Doing in his 37th career game with Florida. He's been offense, now defense, and a big play here for the Gators late in the third quarter. And, David, this is what the defensive coaches Greg Madison, Charlie Strong, John Doc Holliday, and Chuck Heater preach us all the time. Let's get 11 guys going to the football. Ball bounces up and into the waiting arms of Reggie Lewis. Gators got the football down inside the inside the 10 yard line with a chance to punch it in and put some more points on the board. Well, Southern Miss started opening night against the Gators in 1997. Florida won that game 21 to six. They turned the ball over four times that night to help Florida win that game. And now, the third interception thrown by Jeremy Young. And Tim Tebow is in at quarterback, making his Florida debut. He'll try to put the Gators in the end zone. Ball spotted at the six. And Tebow was headed uh, toward the center of the line before the <laughs> flags uh, came in uh, and the whistle blows. Uh, when you know it, and, 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 and any time you get a change of quarterbacks, you get a change of cadence, and all of a sudden the offensive line is like, rookie, let's go. Get that snap count out. Well, the Gators had hoped to get Tebow in this game earlier. Dan Mullen told us, hopefully, in the first quarter for a series. But that didn't happen because Southern Mississippi jumped out to a 7-0 lead. The Gators were fighting for their lives here for a long time. But now a great opportunity to get this young man his first action in college football right here. Good field position, up by two touchdowns. See what he can do. That's the end of the third quarter. So Tebow and company will march to the other end of the field as we start the fourth quarter from Gainesville with seventh-ranked Florida leading Southern Mississippi 21-7. Crazy. All right, we're back to Florida Field because of the penalty. They put a couple of seconds on the clock, and now ball is uh, the clock has started, and that will be the end of the quarter. So there will not be a play run at the end of the third quarter. <laughs> I guess it's called procedure. You have to mark the ball, ready for play, and then let the clock run down. Okay. Well, it's the first game for everybody. Jeff Bowers, Golden Eagles trailing. The Florida Gators, Urban Meyer's second campaign. Florida leading it by two touchdowns. It was like walking into a cartoon because everywhere around you was these bright orange, blue, white colors. And they're, they're, it was like you walked into another planet and a planet where, where people were crazy and crazy for you. Interesting description by Danny Werfel of what it's like to play in the swamp. And you'll hear a lot of other insightful commentary like that from many Gator greats if you'll pick up a copy of this 100th anniversary Gators DVD 100th anniversary season number 100 starting tonight you can get that DVD at GatorsDVD.com and uh, perhaps uh, the face of the future 
At quarterback for the Gators, there's Tim Tebow, the true freshman, highly talented quarterback out of Meese High School, homeschooled, and a, an incredible athlete, 6'3", 229 pounds. Put up amazing numbers in high school, throwing for 900 or 9,940 yards and 95 touchdowns in three years. Also can run the football. And the handoff up the middle to Keystone Moore. And Moore almost put it into the end zone. I think it, everybody felt like Tebow was probably going to carry the football, you're, including you're, the Southern Mississippi. You defense. are so right because watch the defense. Everybody's staying at home, and therefore you don't have Shadowlink coming right down the line of scrimmage, making the tackle on Moore at the uh, line of scrimmage. He stays outside because he's concerned with Tim Tebow's running ability. Good call by Dan Mullen, knowing that uh, the Southern Miss folks are probably looking for Tebow to run the ball. Second down from the one yard line. Low snap. Nice job by Tebow. He stiff arms one man, but can't shoot in. Yep, he did. Touchdown, Tebow. Well, he's built like a linebacker. Urban Meyer says he's a gorilla playing quarterback. And he just shoved uh, the face mask of a defender and able to put the ball in the end zone. Well, David, not only did he do a nice job of fending off the defender, but he showed you tremendous balance as he was going down, able to keep his balance, put that hand down, and then launch himself into the end zone for the touchdown. I, I hope we got a good shot of that as we uh, when we come back. And Wilbur going to try and go for two. I don't think this was a called play. And Wilbur throwing it in the direction of Tate Casey. Might have been a problem with the snap in any event. Florida has taken a 27 to 7 lead on the short touchdown run by freshman Tim Tebow. We'll be back. We're back in Gainesville. Young Tim Tebow scoring his first touchdown for the Florida Gators on a one yard driving run, stiff arming the defensive player. Let's take another look, Nat. Uh, nice job of handling the low snap, but good, strong, stiff arm there. See how he puts that arm down to catch his balance and then catapults himself into the end zone. And then Eric, uh, Wilbur just not able to handle the snap. Good snap, but uh, bad job of catching the football and wisely just trying to unload it. He knows his outlet is Tate Casey just overshot it. Jonathan Phillips, line drive into the end zone. And uh, he had a notion about coming out, but decided otherwise. That's uh, P. Ryan downing the ball wisely in the end zone. And David, how good is it to be a young man like Tim Tebow and your, your first uh, possession, your first drive is uh, a six yard drive for a touchdown? You know, you don't feel good. You know, they always say that if you get the ball on, on your opponent's side of the 50 yard line, you know, chances are that you're going to put some points on the board. When you get to the six-yard line, uh, you'd be kind of disappointed if you don't come out with the touchdown. Field goal is automatic. Yeah, you got to be feeling awfully good because this is a lifelong Gator. This is a young man that grew up dreaming about one day playing in the swamp for the Florida Gators. And here he is, and he scores a touchdown. Fletcher fumbled the ball and then picked it up and got a yard to the 21-yard line. And, and David, I really like that shot we just looked at with Tim Tebow and Chris Leak sitting there together on the bench with the headsets, working together. And you know, as you look at these guys, both of these guys were tremendous players in high school. Chris Chris Leak threw for over 15,000 yards, 185 touchdowns, and this young man Tim Tebow accounted for 158 touchdowns with uh, 95 passing and, and uh, 63 rushing. So, guys complement each other extremely well. And Tebow really willing to learn from the senior. Jarvis Moss got a hand on Young. Young able to break free and chased out of bounds by Brandon Seiler at about the 27-yard line, a couple of yards short of a first down. And it'll bring up third down with under 13 minutes now to play in the fourth quarter. And the Gators with a 20-point lead against the Golden Eagles. And David, that shows you the strength of Jeremy Young. He's 6'3", 215 pounds, but 
Jarvis Moss was the Gators' leading sacker last year with seven and a half sacks, and he was able to pull out of that arm tackle and pick up some positive yardage. Yep, Jarvis Moss getting his first start tonight for the Gators, but played a lot of football last year. Third down and short yardage. And Young throwing it to a wide open Sean Nelson. All-American candidate tight end with the catch and a first down for Southern Mississippi. One change on the sideline, guys, is Steve Adazio, tight end and tackle coach, is now downstairs. Last year he was upstairs in the booth. He's now downstairs working with the offensive linemen. And the first thing he asked Tim Tebow was, did you drop the snap or was it low? And when Tim, Tim said it was low, obviously, Adazio goes right to Steve Ressler. But he really does have his hands full down here because all the youth with that offensive line and inexperience, there's a lot of mistakes right now with communication. Coach with the Urban Meyer at Notre Dame. In the late 90s, Steve Adazio. And again, there's players bouncing all over the place and a flag drop. And I think they're going to call the uh, tight end, Sean Nelson, for moving. The Gators are moving along the line of scrimmage, and he reacted. Right to the snap. False start. Number one on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Well, you can see the what all the hype is, though, about uh, Sean Nelson. Oh, he's, he's an unbelievable player. He's David. a fluid runner and has great hands. Been compared to uh, Leonard Pope at the University of Georgia. Well, he's I, a tight end pro prospect. And I think he has more speed than Leonard Pope uh, of Georgia. I think his longest reception last year was 63 yards. Had five touchdowns. Yeah. Only a couple of catches so far tonight. Young looking. And finding Nelson again up at about the 50-yard line, his third catch of the game. Covered well, though, by Earl Everett. You know, most of the time, Nelson is going to have an advantage lined up one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. But as you mentioned earlier, Nat, Earl Everett has uh, tremendous uh, speed and can cover a guy like Nelson in the open field. Well, Earl Everett is not your average linebacker. Exactly. You know, here's a guy that you know can run and uh, has great athleticism himself. Second and 10 from the 49. Gators blitz, Young throwing. Pass is caught, Joyner missed a tackle, but then here comes uh, help from the secondary. Tremaine McCullum coming up to make the stop. Much improved player is McCullum. Number 18 for the Gators, one of those fifth year seniors out of Miami. Twin brother, Jermaine, also a member of the ball club. And uh, McCullum and Joyner, Kyle Jackson, all have made Great strides from a year ago in that Florida secondary. We've seen that here tonight. And that's a credit to this coaching staff because of the fine job that they do teaching-wise, David. Third down and a yard. Gators have nine men on the line, and the hands off to Fletcher, and there's not many blue shirts back there. Fletcher to the 25. And is brought down inside the 20-yard line at the 15 by Reggie Lewis. Boy, once he broke the line of scrimmage, Nat, the Gators only had a couple of defensive backs there to stop him from scoring. Well, this play is scheduled to hit right up in here, but uh, he's going to bring it back over in here. Now watch that. Everything starts there. Now watch him come out the backside. Good job there. Then he's able to elude Reggie Nelson. Nice job by Reggie Lewis of using the sideline as a help on defense. Even though it doesn't make the tackle, he slows him down, gets him on the ground. Fletcher getting a, a breather, breather over there after the 27-yard run. Pressure, the ball thrown to Thomas. And Thomas goes nowhere. Larry Thomas brought down by Latrell Alford, Brandon Siner, Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith saw this play coming all the way, and uh, good job of getting up there beating the block of the tackle and then making the tackle. Just gets right there before the tackle could get to him, holds on, waits for Brandon Siler to come in and give him a little help. It's all about recognition, David. If you can recognize the play and get there before the big guy get there, you can uh, you can beat him. There's Ryan Smith. Coach Madison says he's got great feet, very quick athlete. And quickly adapting at Florida. Thomas up the middle. Running behind that big uh, right guard, Batiste. Ryan Smith, the starter for the undefeated Utah team in 2004. 
Uh, lost his starting job midway through last year after this coaching staff had departed and, and gone to Florida and was able to transfer to Florida with that new transfer for rule allowing players to lose no eligibility. Well, I, I and uh, so Ryan Smith in the starting lineup. I, I thought I read somewhere, David, he, that he's already graduated as well. Yeah. And uh, you still have five years to complete four years of eligibility. So it gave him an opportunity to come here and play. And he's a junior. He's got uh, another season to play for the Gators. Eligibility-wise. Brandon Seiler dropping Young, and the pass is thrown away. Brandon says, uh, how did he get rid of that ball? I thought I had a sure sack that time. Well, Jeremy Young reminds me a lot of Vince L Young as he is a big, strong running back. That, you know, he's wise. He gets outside of the pocket. As soon as he sees that pressure, just throws the ball away. So he sees Brandon Siler right now. Hey, I got to get out of here. Gets rid of the football, avoids the sack. And how many times has he done that already tonight? Three or four. Out of Provine High School in Jackson, Mississippi is Jeremy Young. There's one of your better linebackers in college football, Brandon Siler. Fourth down, and the Golden Eagles trailing by 20. They're going for it. Young is hit as he throws, and the pass is incomplete. Derek Harvey really drilled him from the, the blind side. And Urban Meyer's defense stands tall again. 8.41 left in the fourth quarter. Florida 27, Southern Mississippi 7. Football on Sun Sports is brought to you in part by K&G Superstores. For men, for less. And by the Alachua County Visitors and Convention Bureau, where nature and culture meet. Back in the swamp in Gainesville, David Steele, Nat Moore. Steve Bamick on the sideline. The Gators leading 27 to 7 with 8.41 left in the fourth quarter. Florida with four touchdowns, two via the air, two via the ground. Chris Leak with a pair of touchdown passes. And the Gators with the ball. And Leak back in at quarterback after Tim Tebow scored his first touchdown just uh, on the Gators' last possession. Leak's throw is uh, incomplete. And it'll be second and 10. So the Gators, after falling behind 7 to nothing, last play of the first period, Leak finding Dallas Baker in the corner of the end zone, tying the game at 7-7. Deshaun Wynn barreling into the end zone midway through the second period, makes it a 14-7 game. Leak connecting on a beautifully thrown ball into the corner of the end zone with Jamal Cornelius. That made it 21-7. And then Tim Tebow barreling into the end zone, his first collegiate score, 27-7. The PAT missed on a bobbled snap, and that's where we are with 8.19 to play in the fourth period from Gainesville. There with the Gators, with, uh, as we take a look at uh, Tim Tebow, you know, all this is part of learning. He knows every play that's being called in to Chris Leak, and you know this is how you learn when you're a freshman. You, 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 you stand as close as you can, you put that headset on, and get, a, you get used to those plays, the terminology, all those are things that that Tim Tebow has got to learn, and uh, great opportunity for him. Very talented young quarterback. It's third down and nine. Leak, beautiful throw, and the Gators have their first down as uh, Harvin with the catch out to the 36-yard line. Boy, Percy Harvin has wasted no time and making his presence felt in this Florida offense. Well, Percy Harvins is working from the left side. You'll see right there, he'll come right in your screen. This time, he runs through the route. Chris Leak hits him in perfect timing. And then this is a guy that's going to get a lot of what they call yak. Yards after the catch because he's just a tremendous runner. It's hard to tackle him in the open field. He's carried three times for 49 yards. Harvin has caught three passes for 33 yards. What a debut for a true freshman. Baker is there. What a grab. Reaching and pulling it in at the 36-yard line of Southern Mississippi. I tell you this here. When you have chemistry with your quarterback, he knows what you're going to do. You know what he's going to do. This ball is thrown right now. The ball's in the air. Now watch when he turns. Look, the ball's there. Nice job by... Dallas Baker of beating his demand. This ball is thrown early. See, he just lobs it. Now you see Baker turn, looks, 
catches the ball in his hand. The key is, as a receiver, once you get in that route, you've got to swing that head around, locate the football. And nothing the defender Hendricks could do with that ball thrown where it was. Leak now over 200 yards for the 27th time in his career. Here's Baker again. And the senior from New Smyrna Beach having a tremendous game coming off that outback bowl in which Baker was uh, the MVP of that game with 10 catches. Here tonight, Dallas Baker has nine catches for 122 yards. Yeah, but, but what? This is another look at the other side. But what Dallas Baker is doing right now is he's showing Chris Leak that, you know what? I'm your go-to guy. That was not a good pass by Chris Leak. It was actually behind Dallas. Dallas reaches back, catches the ball in his hands, and then turns, gets upfield, picks up additional yardage. So, you know, they've, found, they've got something clicking here this afternoon. Arvin on a quick handoff. He's got some blockers in front of him. Look at that stutter step, and then the explosion <laughs> to the 16-yard line by Percy Harvin. David. I can only say to you, my friend, it's going to be fun because I like this young man. It's Percy Harvin makes everybody miss as he stops on a dime, and it takes Matthew Shadowley to come back and make this play. Outstanding move by the freshman. Now, I see why he was rated the number one receiver in the country in high school last year. You know, year. This, uh, this offense, Urban Meyer has brought in, it needs playmakers. It needs players capable of busting the big one, and Harvin is the guy that can do that. There is no question. Leak had a man. Moore to the five. Keystone Moore for the touchdown. David, the Gators are just playing pits and catch right now. Nice job by Chris Leak of getting everybody in the right formation. And Andre Caldwell wasn't sure he was going to the left side. He motioned him back to the right and then threw it out to Keyshawn Moore. Good hands. Just spread it into the end zone. Nothing fancy. Third touchdown pass by Leak tonight. And Keystone Moore puts one in the end zone. Florida 34, Southern Miss 7 from the swamp on opening night. Five and a half minutes to play in the fourth period. Now Florida has scored 34 unanswered points and leads the Golden Eagles by 27. Easton Moore with uh, the touchdown reception, his second touchdown reception as a Gator, the sophomore from Arlington, Texas. And Chris Leak having a typical Chris Leak night. 21 out of 30, 248 yards, three touchdowns, the early interception which uh, was as much, if not uh, more, the fault of the receiver than Leak on that early interception. And you won't ever hear me put it on the receiver. Not too often. <laughs> but uh, that time, you, you sort of let the quarterback down, but he's bounced back and showed Chris he's a guy that he can depend on. And Chris rewarded him with a couple passes here. As he ever. Jonathan Phillips. Ball received at the 10-yard line. Pirine looking for a crease and that uh, return team and brings the ball out to the 21. Well, let's go back and take a look at the touchdown pass to Keyshawn Moore. He's actually motioned out here already. And then what's going to happen? Chris Leak is going to look down to the corner, looking at Ingram, and then just drop it off to Moore there. And then Moore is able to make this guy right in. This is the starting quarterback. And Moore just able to get by him, sprint into the end zone. And that's actually Hendricks. That uh, not able to make the tackle, but I must say, David, a very tired Hendricks. Yeah, I think uh, the Southern Mississippi team wearing down for sure here in the fourth period as we hit the five-minute mark. Jeremy Young still. Nope, let's check that. Stephen Reeves has checked in. So Young uh, has given way to Stephen Reeves, the son of former Gator great John Reeves. Here's a good look at Stephen, the junior transfer from Michigan State University. Well, he's uh, had some tough times uh, trying to get his college career on track. There's his father, John Reeves, back in the late 60s, early 70s. He and Carlos Alvarez, great one-two pass-catch combination in Florida history. And, David, when, when I came to Florida for my personal visit, John Reeves was one of the guys that invited me over to his house and talked to me about what it's like to be a Gator. And uh, 
You know, I appreciate that uh, something dearly. Uh, uh, just a first-class guy played in the NFL for 14 years. That's a well-thrown ball by the big uh, left-hander caught by Chris Johnson. Stephen Reeves' sister flying in uh, to be here all the way from California. His sister's husband is a coach on the USC staff. And so uh, she chooses to come and watch her brother play against the Florida Gators then uh, travel with her husband to Arkansas for the Southern Cal Arkansas game. Reeves throwing and Nelson with the catch at the 37 yard line. David, it, it's so amazing how strategic defenses have gotten right now. They know what your break off is. If they come with the blitz, the, the tight end's going to turn out. You've got the safety coming over. You, you know that even week? if they complete the pass, it's only going to be for a two or three yard okay. game, which is a negative play. I mean, it's just outstanding coaching by Strong and Madison, the uh, coordinators. Well, they have done a terrific job tonight. The only score by Southern Miss set up by the pass interception giving them a field position inside the 30-yard line. And the pass completed by Reeves, very close to a first down. Don't forget to tune in for Tailgate Overtime, presented by Bell South, featuring a panel of experts, including former UF wide receiver Chris Doring, former FSU fullback William Floyd, and former Miami quarterback Steve Walsh. They'll join our host, Whit Watson, and preview and review the big college football games in, involving your favorite Florida teams. Monday night at 6, only on Sun Sports. It is a first down for Southern Mississippi. John Reeves has been battling Jeremy Young for the starting job throughout the preseason. This pass is thrown behind P. Ryan incomplete. Immediately following tonight's game, the season's first Geico Gator postgame on Sun Sports. Sun Sports picks up where the networks leave off by giving viewers exclusive extended postgame coverage hosted by Whit Watson and Brady Ackerman. David Steele and Matt Moore with Steve Babick. 2.52 left in the fourth period. Stephen Reeves, who suffered a torn ACL last fall, in his red shirt year. Now looking to throw. And incomplete intended for Nelson. It'll be third down coming up for Southern Miss. And Dallas Baker has been a big playmaker for the Gators tonight. Yeah, he's just been able to run through this secondary. Just good job. You know, big, big, strong target at 6-3. Just gives Chris Leak a nice target to throw to. And then he shows you the speed and athleticism. Great hands. He's the nephew of uh, former great Wes Chandler. Nine catches today for over 100 yards, right around his average, 13 yards and a touchdown. Wes Chandler, one of the all-time uh, great receivers for the Gators. Reeves steps up and throws a strike to Big Nelson, and the tight end picks up a first down on third and 10 in the Florida territory at the 37-yard line. Let's go to the sideline and get a running back update from Steve Babbitt. Well, one concern that Urban Meyer will have to address in the postgame will be about the running back situation. We talked about Deshaun Wing going out with some type of neck injury that was being checked on. Also, uh, third running back, Marcus Manson, got hurt on a special teams play, and that's why you saw number 33, Keystone Moore, really the only option at running back. So a story getting ready for Central Florida. Who's healthy at running back? Reeves' pass is thrown up for grabs uh, into double coverage. It almost picked off. Good coverage by the Florida Gators. That was John Curtis, number, number 24. And McCollum, Jermaine and McCollum also on uh, that play as the Gators getting uh, some second unit guys in there. Getting some second unit guys, but, but even more so, David, that you've got uh, the safeties. That's Brian Carpenter. Brian Carpenter, yeah. Daryl looks just like him. Yeah. 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 But uh, as, you, as you start to look at this, this wholesale changes, as a coach, you're saying, is everybody getting where they're supposed to be? And you see those safeties breaking on the football, getting up there where they're supposed to be. Pass complete to Nelson again. Now, now this is what I call building your stats. Because, you know, Nelson is a great receiver, but early in the ball game, he had a chance to make some plays, David, and didn't make it. Now that the game's out of reach and they're in a zone defense, you know, he's getting to catch a lot of balls with nobody around him. So it's called pad your stats. Yeah. 
I tell I was you, guilty of that. Yeah, you did that a few times, I'm sure. There's six catches for Nelson. Reeves looks good throwing the football. Ex he's exceptionally well. He started against Notre Dame a couple of years ago at Michigan State. And he dumps this one. Strong Gator connection on that team with Reeves and uh, Bryant Carpenter. Of course, John Reeves, Stephen Reeves' father, great quarterback, and uh, Daryl Carpenter, an all Southeastern Conference lineman. Bryant Carpenter's older brother, Daryl Jr., also played for the Florida Gators as a walk on and had a nice career. Dream come true for Reeves to be playing here in Gainesville. Even though it is for Southern Mississippi. Fletcher on the handoff and is chased down at the 20 yard line. Nice tackle made by Jermaine Cunningham, the freshman linebacker. Gatorzone.com, the premier site for Gator Sports News. Read the latest scores, check out scores, watch live games. You can also get the best in Gator merchandise, all at Gatorzone.com. David, as you start to run in all of the uh, backups, uh, second teamers and third teamers, you know, how good is it that you're getting to go against the first team players for the Golden Eagles? Because, that, you know, that's the experience that you're looking to get. Quality time, even though it's in a mop-up situation. That pass uh, by Reeves was thrown behind uh, Josh Barnes. I tell you, one thing that uh, Stephen Reeves has showed me is that he has that clock in his head like most good quarterbacks that he realizes when he's running out of time and he gets rid of the football. The Gators have been there a couple times where it looked like they're going to get the sack and he's able to unload the football before they get there. Here is Reeves on fourth down and the pass is dropped. Should have been caught by Barnes. I'm not sure he would have had a first down either way, however. Gators had good coverage. There you see Barnes uh, going off. Uh, he took a good shot after he dropped the football. And for all you young receivers out there that, you know, when you go across the middle, you don't get hit anyway. So you might as well catch the football so you take the punishment for a reason. You know, because once that defender starts to lay out, there's no way he can pull up. Gator defense with three true freshmen on the field able to stop Southern Mississippi. Jermaine Cunningham, Dustin Doe, and Brandon Spikes all playing for the Gators on that series. Only 56 seconds left. Tim Tebow will run the Gator offense for the final minute here in the swamp. And the handoff up the middle. He's on Moore, the ball carrier, for four or five yards. You know, the rule change with the, the clock starting on change of possession didn't seem to really come into play tonight. I watched that South Carolina <laughs> Mississippi State game the other night, and it was a factor, but tonight has not seemed to be. College football trying to shorten the length of games. Average plays last year in college football were 141. He's done more with a nice move to the outside. Hendricks finally able to take him out of bounds near midfield. And David, we've got to talk to my man, Tim Tebow. We've got to get him to understand, David, that he is a quarterback. When the running back breaks the line of scrimmage like that, he's running for a touchdown. The quarterback is supposed to sit back and watch. He's not supposed to try and catch up and throw the lead block as Tim Tebow did there. He, he showed you the speed. <laughs> Oh, man, he's got that linebacker mentality. Yeah, he does. Only nine seconds left in the game. And Tebow gives to Moore again, and that'll be the final play of the football game. Urban Meyer's second year beginning on a winning note with the Florida Gators. And season number 100 starts with a victory against Jeff Bauer and a rough University of Southern Mississippi football team. So, Nat, your thoughts on this victory to open the season for the Gators? Good victory over a good football team, a team that came in here with a lot of fight and refused to quit. You know, the Gators were just uh, too much for them. To, uh, they outmanned them all the way. Chris Leak looked like he's in midseason form, and I'm excited about Percy Harvins. Well, a lot of talented youngsters running around the field tonight in the swamp for the Gators. Harvin, number one among them. Let's go to Steve Babick.
Okay, Coach Meyer, first of all, much better second half. You had to be pleased with that second half effort. We gotta get, we gotta get a lot better. We gotta get a lot better. And I'll watch a film before I'll make judgment. But I thought our defense played very well. I think our offense is still not in sync. And it's nice to see Tim get in there and have a broken play and score a touchdown. We got a long way to go. Some guys made big plays. We saw Dallas Baker make a great catch. Jamel Cornelius, guys that you knew can make those kind of plays. Yeah, but uh, you, you know this league, we're going to be in it here in a couple weeks, and we're going to have to play a lot better, including those guys. Young guy like Percy Harvin showed a little sign of what he can do. Yeah, he's been doing that in practice. That's that's uh, oh, He's a very good player. The, the Swamp's going to enjoy watching that guy play for the next three years. Your defense able to force turnovers. Yeah, we uh, Reggie Lewis, I believe, had one, and Tony Joyner. So I think our defense played fairly well against a team that was the third best offense in school history. So... Uh, uh, we got a chance to be pretty good on defense. All right, Coach, what are you going to talk to your team about as far as what you liked and didn't like in that first game? Uh, we just got to improve as a football team. Our goal since day one is to become a great team. We're certainly not a great team. I like our attitude. Our preparation was good. We played a good team. So I miss a good football team. So uh, we just got a long way to go. Thanks, Coach. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Urban Meyer with a uh, little uh, room for growth after this Gator victory. His football team scoring 34 unanswered points against Southern Mississippi. And without that early... Uh, turnover Nat this could have been a shutout tonight against a good offensive team in Southern Miss well I agree with you David uh, offensively you you turn the football over you give Southern Miss a short field and, and the defense seemed like they were in shock because that's something they don't expect from a uh, Gator football team offensively I thought the offensive line did a commendable job of protecting Chris Lake and trying to open holes for the running backs especially when they were going up the middle and then when you look at the defense, uh, Reggie Nelson, you, you can't talk enough about his play. Reggie Lewis coming up with a big interception. And when you look at Tony Jordan, got it played well. We didn't call Earl Everett's name a lot. Didn't call Brandon Siler's name a lot. That means that somebody else was making plays. And, you know, the outstanding part of talking to Tony George, it was about how the team did everything. Somebody always came up with a play. And you're not looking for one guy to do everything all the time. So I think they got, got what they needed accomplished tonight. They just got to continue to improve. College football on Sun Sports has been brought to you in part by your Southern Chevy dealers. Visit us today and find out why Chevy is America's number one brand, number one value. By Checkers, the official burger of the Florida Gators. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Final score tonight from the Swamp in Gainesville. The Florida Gators knocking off the Southern Mississippi Golden Eagles. Steve Spurrier on hand to celebrate the 96 National Championship team that he coached here as well. And a lot of playmakers running around on the Swamp tonight for the Gators. They win it by the score of 34 to 7. This has been a special presentation of Sun Sports. Don't forget to tune in Monday night at 6 for Tailgate Overtime presented by Bell South. Bell South. For Nat Moore, I'm David Steele along with Steve Babick. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and good night.